Yeah, yeah, he was looking for a way out. I thought, yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll take that belt easy. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that belt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've looked like I'd been on the set of The Walking Dead. Like, I remember just panicking and splashing water on my face thinking, I don't remember sleeping. I just remember laying on my back in bed, just cold Shivering. and Shivering. Oh. And then when he got in the cage the next day, I thought he's brought in his bigger brother. I was like, who, who the fuck is this guy? Like, what else you say at that point? You just put your hand on the shoulder. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> Shape, I'm up down dunk. And out of shape, I'm downtown chunk. Downtown chunk, buddy. Oh, I can't catch a break, guys. Yeah, if you like Joe Rogan, yeah, you're, 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 you're going to yeah. love you think, oof, Like, that is a savage corner, man. If shit kicks off with both these corners, we're okay. Yeah. yeah. We're right. It's a rough, ugly, and unforgiving sport, but man, it's beautiful when you're winning. Yeah, yeah. It is beautiful when you're winning. Right, you good? Yeah, you good? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Good, yeah. Hello, and welcome to the Curious Fijian. I'm the Fijian, the host. <laughs> I'm the cameraman, X. The new host, pretty much. Yeah. The man's been here. We got Dunk, Uptown Dunk. Uptown Dunk, yeah. Where did the name come from? We've been speaking about so it all I, day because he was calling you up top. Up top, top Dunk. Uptown Dunk. So I was in California. I was training um, Team Alpha Male. You know Team Alpha Male? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're running Cody, around doing a lap. Cody Garbrandt Cody, and all that. It was Cody Garbrandt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, funny enough, yeah. So he's like, go on my Snapchat. And I was like, he goes, I'll give you a shout out. What's your name? And at the time I had Duncan Superman MMA on Twitter or something stupid like that. I had um, Uptown Dunk on something else and something else on fucking Instagram. And he's like, you need one name for everything. So we go, oh yeah, Uptown Dunk. Made Uptown Dunk, give me a shout, everything. And then I'm running around the gym and he's fucking chasing after me going, you're Uptown Dunk, Uptown Dunk. And it was in and around the time of Uptown Funk come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, in and around that. And I thought, fuck it, I'll jump on that. Cody Garbrandt says get a name. I was like, yeah, absolutely. What man. was yeah. it like training with him? It was it was insane because they're right. unreal. Like Cody Garbrandt around that time would have been champion, if not going for the championship. No, no, it's TJ. TJ was the champ, and Cody was, I reckon, about a year away. Oh, a year God. away from it. Yeah, it was nuts, man. I couldn't believe it. I was like, turned up, and my mate Vinny's like, "We're gonna go to the cinema with someone." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sound yeah, cool." Rock up to the cinema, and I just couldn't believe it. The whole time of the film, I'm just here, and I'm looking at my shoulder. And it's fucking Uriah Faber, but like my favorite fight at the time. I'm just films on, and I'm just there looking at this dude, just like. <laughs> it's cool, man. I couldn't believe it. It was like I literally I did a post on my face on my Instagram about February that year of Uriah Faber in a magazine I just bought, and then September that year I'm sat two seats down from in the cinema. I just couldn't fucking believe it. I was just sat there like, this is mental. He bought me popcorn as well. I was thinking I might not even eat this popcorn. I might take it. Out. <laughs> Put it back in the suitcase. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna treasure every bite of this, man. What was? What are they actually like training with these high, high level it guys? Was, I've never in my life felt so out of place immediately. Like the first day I got there, I remember uh, 22 hours of travelling, and uh, Vinny was like sparring today, and I was like, yeah, yeah, sound, let's go. And he's like, look, you've been travelling for 22 hours. I, I would say just sleep, get ready, and go again tomorrow. I was like, no, I'm ready to train. And he was like, no, no, sleep. So I slept. Woke up a few hours later, they'd all been to sparring. Came back, matey boys here, matey boys there. And we're like, oh yeah, so where'd you fight? I was like, I've had a couple of amateur fights in Battle Arena. I was like, it's a relatively good amateur show in the UK. He's like, oh yeah, Bellator. The Brazilian guy over here is on Tough Brazil. I was like, Pff. he's like, oh, so I actually put a sofa the first night because the Brazilian guy didn't know he was supposed to leave. And I'm thinking, I ain't going to tell the guy that's in like the semi finals of Tough Brazil. <laughs> yeah. I think Yair Rodriguez beat him. So I was like, I ain't going to tell this guy to get out of my bed. You know? Yeah, I yeah. Was like, I, wasn't, I wasn't that guy at that point. And then everyone else was Bellator. UFC, the borderline of UFC, and, I've, and I'm just here like amateur fight. I was like, shit. Bro, man, you're up there. That's like, mad. Yeah, I can't believe he's just though. come on here and said this. Yeah. Training with Cody Carbrand, yeah, you're yeah, right, so, Faber. No, that was, it was mental. And that was the time when uh, they were releasing the armor fight with Faber and, and McGregor, McGregor with the push. And he was like demoing a push. And he was like, yeah, you stand up here, mate. And I was fucking, I thought, oh my God, am I about to have to fight Cody Carbrand here? <laughs> I was like, in his house? I was like, fucking absolutely mental. But they were they were some of the nicest people. The nicest one there was Joe ben, Joe Benavidez. Yeah. The first day I got there, he was uh, someone went near him and he was like, "Yo, get the fuck out of my space." And I thought, I thought, oh, dickhead, I was an absolute dickhead. Turns out he was good friends with that guy, and they were just pissed around. He's like, "This is the zone for the good fighters," sort of thing. And I thought, oh, I don't belong here, man. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna step on someone's toes, you know, and get battered by one of but, them. But that's what you got to do, man. You yeah, got to yeah. go into the fire. You got, you're gonna. Yeah. It's no good training with people that. You're going to be the king yeah, yeah, of your own gym. You're you not going to deep end, man. Yeah. Like, uh, like Till and Hamza. Yeah, Till's yeah. gone oh, over I to train with him. How funny yeah. is that, that it man? It looks so good. It, it looks so good, <laughs> man. I, I, hope, smash I, bros. I, I just don't want to see like a Colby, um, Masvidal situation in yeah, a couple of years, yeah. you know, because Hamza smokes Till at the moment. That he would. Smokes yeah. He would. Yeah. I don't think they'd do that, though. They seem quite real. Well, Hamza saying like he's going to fight, win a belt in whatever, and he said after, I'll vacate it and Till can win it. He goes, I don't want to fight. Them two together, man. And funniest, funniest combo. What he's doing at the moment, if he does that to... It's easy to do against the guys he's done it to, but if he does that against Burns, 
I, I, you're looking at someone. Look, if he goes on and does it and makes it look this easy, it's like, where does he stop? If he does that to Gilbert Burns, like this incredible grappler and incredible striker, where does it stop, man? Yeah. He, he goes through Usman, doesn't he? If he does that to Burns, he goes through yeah. Usman, without a doubt. Because Burns trains with Usman. Used to, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're they training to together now. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I see some of yeah, like, Usman's helping yeah, him for the fight, because yeah, obviously probably the yeah, wrestling. Yeah. They don't want fucking Kamzat to come. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you fucking have to be him, mate. He's like, I don't want to do this work. You've got to do it for Of course he's helping him. Oh, my God, I can't believe that, man. Um, do you think the hype's real for him? Uh, obviously, you're for me, I'm looking I, at it, I'm, I'm like, a, I believe him. Yeah. I'm like, I fucking believe him, but was, you're a I, fighter. I remember uh, being on the hype of Conor McGregor just before he fought Max Holloway the first time. I was like telling my coach, telling everyone he's going to smoke these guys, he's going to do this. So I'm a bit of a hype, hype, one of those idiots that believe the hype. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just think he's that. Um, who's the guy he beat last time? Jang Lee or something like that? He's, oh, yeah. He's, the, he's yeah. an okay fighter. He's like your benchmark. He's okay in the UFC. I think he's just outside the top 15, so he's your benchmark. And he smoked him. He's taken one punch in four fights. He's like 12 minutes, 56 seconds of fighting. And he's had 11 minutes, 56 seconds of control. That's 58 yeah. seconds of not control. You've got to remember, the fight starts and you've got to run up to each other and he just grabs hold of them. Like, that That's fight, unbelievable, yeah. man. Less than a minute, he's not been in control of four fights. He's taken one punch. Like, how do you... I hope he does do it because he's actually... Like, he's a nice... He seems yeah, like a nice seems, person. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he's when you watch yeah, yeah. his YouTube, mate, you're like... You're, you're following yeah, it. You're like, yeah, I, I love those this two together, guy. Yeah. Man. <laughs> it's, every, you want to watch it because they just... It's like a love story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like a rom-com. You just can't not watch it. <laughs> it's mad as well. They both understand each other as well. Both yeah, because he scouts, so man. Mad. He can't speak yeah. like proper English <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, till yeah. So yeah, He's probably translating. He, he, yeah, he's yeah. Tried, that was like on the Smash Bros. He's translating Smash it to the Bros, camera. Yeah. And Hamza's like, I talk to Till, Till translate yeah, to you. Yeah. You translate to the people. But they've invited McGregor to it, haven't they? they yeah. Said, I, I think he's too much of a... a Superstar. Yeah, I think he's too past being friends with anyone now. But that trip... Yeah, what what do you think with McGregor? Though? You think the fame that's got to his head? Yeah, it's like... He's... I remember Dana White saying when he fought Poirier the second time, it was like, or the third time, sorry, it was like Dustin Poirier's in a little hotel room that week thinking, I've got to fight Conor McGregor, the biggest fight of my life, the trilogy. And he's like, and then McGregor's on a yacht out in the sea thinking, how much does it cost to fill up this yacht? He's like, I've got 40 people working there. How much do they earn a year? He's like, I've got four kids to look after. He's like, I've got five businesses to run. He's got everything going on in his head and Poirier's just got the fight. Yeah. So for McGregor, everyone else he fights isn't in that situation. So they're just thinking of one thing. Hungry. And he's, yeah, tunnel exactly. vision. Yeah, they're thinking... I could take out Conor McGregor. He's been subbed now. He's been knocked out now. I could be the next guy to knock him out. And it's like, the fifth time he gets knocked out, no one's going to remember that. You want to be, Dustin Poirier got the first one, didn't he? Yeah. The second one's still going to be just as impressive. If someone goes out and knocks him out again, yeah. just as impressive. But I don't know. He, I don't know what he's doing. He's turning into a bodybuilder. No. I think he's... Do you think, do you think he's done for him now? Though? I think so. Yeah. I, I, was, I was a little... I've got like a poster of him up in my room, man. Yeah. Like, this is that little I, last hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, it's Poirier and McGregor. I love those two. And obviously Faber when he used to fight, but I just. I don't see him ever being Poirier, ever. Like, in the first time they fought, it was a walk in the park for him. And this time around, it's like, every time Poirier hit him, it was like he was going to knock him out every yeah. single time. I think it's because, like you said, Poirier's still on that trajectory, like fighting. Yeah, yeah. He needs to fight to feed his kids. Whereas McGregor's done that. He yeah, hit, yeah. hit all oh, of his yeah, goals. He smashed his now, goals. Yeah. Then yeah, Floyd yeah. Mayweather, like, he smashed all of his yeah. goals. So to smash all your goals and then yeah. be rich, famous, and then have to come back and kind of work yeah. your way and do it again it's probably it's, it might be too fun, much fun will get you so far on enjoyment he says I do this because I enjoy it but it'll only get you so far when you're yeah. so tired in the morning you want to get up and you're just like uh, what Joe Rogan said silk sheets yeah. guys, once you've got them silk sheets it's hard to get out of bed yeah. you'd end up like, like yeah. regretting it as well because you don't want to be taking loads of losses yeah, when you yeah. come up so good and then to like let and your it's, ego it's control the you drugs the alcohol just the getting punched he's turning I don't know who he's turning into but nah yeah, yeah. I like good, when we said we were watching him do that thing to his servant or something. yeah you see the video it. of his servant nah. he's like, blo- like uh, he's drinking uh, water and he asked his servant to get it for him and he was like filming all of it but it's just so like come on man he's being a bit of a dick like remember where you come from do you yeah, know what I mean, I mean the documentary of him where he's on, uh, he's on welfare or the Irish equivalent. How good is that doc? It's yeah, incredible. It's I've got the video doc. in yeah. the in the thing. Yeah, How, that documentary is so yeah, good. But like you said, don't forget where you come from. He should yeah. put that on every so often, man. It's just, but what did he sell his company for? Like eighty percent of it for like six hundred million. It's like, how do you? I can't imagine how. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and like you said, that, like the fame know, I'll, I'll it, yeah, beats people, yeah. man. It gets I'll, to people. I'll sit here and say, yeah, I'll still be the same guy, but six. What, what does he reckon he's worth? Four point five billion, or is it three? He was going to buy Chelsea, so he's definitely got. He's a got decent net worth, yeah. doesn't he? You know, yeah. so it's like he's got dough. He don't. He's got a long time. Yeah. Are you going to be the same person in that situation? It's nah. it's hard to say until you're there. Yeah. 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 But obviously, onto you. 
Yeah. You got your professional debut July yeah. the second. Yeah. What? What? Obviously, this is your first pro fight. Yeah. What are your emotions like going into that um, night? This one's a bit different because it was supposed to be March nineteenth. I had, like I said, the two year gap with a hamstring and COVID, and then it was supposed to be. I wanted October the ninth to be my pro debut. I thought I'm ready. I'm good to go. My coach talked me out of it. He said, let's just have one more amateur fight sort of thing and then see how you're at. And it's lucky I did because I did all of this training, this horrific diet. I ended up dropping, I think it was 26 pounds for the camp. Like, yeah, COVID. I got up to 165 and I usually walk at 140, fight at 135. Yeah. So that was insane, that weight cut. And you then, walk around at 140? I used to walk at 140. What, yeah. what, what do you walk around so, now if you don't mind? Uh, 158, no, 149 to 151. Because you're not small. No, no, so I'm a tall bantamweight. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you think, yeah, Cody, Cody and that, all, the average bantamweight is five, six to five, eight. So most of the guys I fight, they're, they're going to be wedges as well. They're short, stocky yeah, guys. Yeah, who's so they, short and stocky? Yeah, who's yeah, the yeah. other one that fights out there, the tall one? Corey Sanderhagen. Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's tall. To me. He's 5'10", so I think I'm an inch taller than him, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm tall for that weight. But then it's like people will get under my centre of gravity and they can get me down. Mm. So that's what we're trying to do, a lot of wrestling, but. Yeah, back to the fight. I ended up having that one. I got pushed against the cage straight away. I ended up knocking him out in the first exchange, which was, I said to my coach, is that enough proof that like, I need to move on now sort of thing? This guy wasn't that good, but I said I was going to knock him out. I told everyone I was going to knock him out. First exchange, I knocked him out. So I was like, I'm ready to go pro now. Do you know, sorry to interrupt you, but do you know what the funniest thing about it was? Because I was watching all, I was going yeah, through all yeah, your yeah, fights last night. Yeah. And yeah. the um, the commentator, when you're yeah, walking yeah. out, says about <laughs> he hasn't got knockout power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go out there, absolutely <laughs> starch him. You know, yeah. you know, like, so Chris Benson and Steve Brinkman, I love those two. They're, every fight they go up to me, go, what's going to happen tonight? I'm like, he's going to do this, he's going to do that, and I'm going to do this. And usually I'm right. So I bumped into Steve and I said, I, I listened to the last fight and Chris said I ain't got knockout power. I was like, trust me, I'm going to knock this guy out. I'm going to sit down on my punches. I just made a decision in my head. Instead of being like in and out, in and out, and just touching people, scoring points, I'd always be like, I'll outpoint this guy, and if I stop him, I'll stop him. Whereas this one, I said to myself, I'm just going to plant my feet, and I'm going to knock him out. And I was like, the weight I had on me as well, I thought, I'm going to go through this guy. And then, yeah, as soon as the fight finished, I'm sat there on my knees just sort of thinking, and I look up at Chris, and I'm like, I fucking told you. I was like, I told you. <laughs> and you hear at the end of the fight, I got to I told you, man. And it was, I was down He did get feeding, planted, yeah. though, man. Yeah, he, he, that was a walk-off KO. Yeah, yeah. You don't get better than a my first, my first proper knockout. And I walked off as if I'd done it a thousand times. Yeah. It's, I said to Linus after the fight, it's like, as soon as I hit him with the left hook and I saw his eyes go, I thought, Poof. I was like, he's gone. Yeah. He, he might not come back for a while. So I walked off and he recovered quite quick. But I mean, it was, there was no need for me to do anything else on the ground. He was done. Yeah. You know, it would have just been a shitbag move if I carried on hitting. Mm. But um, yeah, so I wanted that to be the debut and I'm kind of glad it wasn't. And we agreed on March the 19th. And then uh, I had a couple of neck injuries. One of the guys at the gym dislocated my toe. I, busted up my foot again just a couple of things it was almost like fate and my coach were telling me just wait let's just sort of, there's no rush let's yeah. push it out let's push it out then we said may the 14th and i thought the day after linus's fight i thought how sick is that going to be i'll cut weight travel up to london watch my mate fight for the british title come back and then fight in my hometown the next night and then that's got pushed back because of ramadan i think which is a bit frustrating but i understand there's a lot of fires that can't do mm. it so that's fair enough so now it's july the second yeah. july the second so not a yeah it's a it's a bit away from may but it's, it's not it's not too bad though. yeah i'm having this week doing nothing because i literally been in training camp for a pro fight since january mm. you know and that's 12 weeks and then i'm not going to roll on for another 14 weeks and do like a 26 27 week camp that's too much because I, I just pick up another injury you yeah. know it's just it's silly Give the body what it needs as well yeah man. i just yeah i'm having a week off i'm doing i might go hiking tomorrow and other than that Nothing. Just, yeah, Call of Duty, maybe, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah get him yeah. on the war zone. Yeah, I'm, I'm dog shit, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's not me. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to a point where I was okay with uh, with my old uh, work lot, and then I just stopped playing. I thought, yeah, I ain't going to lose it. You don't like riding the bike. And then... Uh, people get better. I loaded you... up two games today, and I was done. Yeah, no, games. people get better, man. Like, we go... I go on, like... Because I'm not one of them people. I can't go on every single day, but yeah, I might yeah, go yeah. on if I fancy it. And then I'll go on a week later, and I'm like, oh, I'm real shit. Everything. Yeah, oh, I'm so shit. All over the place. I'm, yeah. I'm just laying down watching the ropes. I played um, with two different squads and I knew I was going to be trash. So I muted my mic. So I couldn't, so I couldn't, I couldn't hear me say anything. Like, oh man, this guy's dog shit. Like, Who is this guy? I'm thinking, fucking, like, I'm trying, man. It's not, like I'm, it's not like I'm not trying to win this game. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah I do like a bit of quad, yeah. But you started MMA at 20. 20, yeah. Which would be relatively, you'd look at it probably relatively late. I'd say super late, yeah. Did, some, some of the guys I'm fighting like nine they're, or they've got like a background in something you know jujitsu well, or nine or something yeah well if you look at people like cody garbrandt wrestled yeah. all the way through high school he boxed boxing all the way through high school yeah some of these guys it's just mental like i tried to play catch up by training as much as i could like when i was younger as soon as i started i had the first four years just like an idiot just i thought mucking around and then drinking on the weekends drinking twice a week 
missing training, skipping training, stuff like that. They're just that's why I say to the younger lads, like make a decision now. Like mm. don't fuck about. Make a decision now whether you want to do it or not. If it's fun, go and enjoy yourself, train, have a couple of fights. But if you want to do it as a career, like you need to move on. You need to stop with all of this part. Let's get stuff. serious. Yeah, and yeah, quick, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So why? How comes? Obviously, to turn pro at twenty nine, yeah, it would be probably could be classes like yeah, late yeah, as well. My, my, Ideally, my plan is to 36, 36, I reckon. MMA is a bit different to boxing. It's not, you don't need that explosiveness. You need like your type one foot muscles, your type two muscles. You need to wrestle and grapple. The heavier weights can go on to like 40, 41, 42. Glover Teixeira is 42 and he just won the yeah. light heavyweight title. That's the heavier weights. So I'm not, I'm not stupid. I know the lighter weights is more explosive than anything. So ideally 35, 36, get in, get as far as I can. Like the goals, like just as far as I can. I don't want to put a cap on it and say, Cage Warriors, Cage Warriors well title. I want to go as far as I can. And then that way, I've tried my hard. I don't, if you cap yourself, once you get there, you get there and that's it, it's done. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. just, as far as I can go, make as much of a name for myself as I can and eventually open my own gym and go from there, yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully he gets to the UFC. Yeah. Uh, mate, that, it'd be ideal. Very That'd ideal. Be mental, you know, man. Yeah. O2, yeah. fighting at the O2. I don't know if uh, Bedford, ever had a guy in the UFC, but oh, we've got well, Sam Creasy, where's he? He'll get there soon. So he'll probably be the first yeah. in this area, yeah. Dunk, him or his brother yeah I'll take second. third place I'll take <laughs> third place yeah I'll take third place man. nice podium <laughs> yeah, yeah podium <laughs> you don't exactly, know yeah. man you just... and, not, yeah. and another thing I noticed about you as well they always try to grapple yes, they always yeah. try to grapple your takedown defence is it's getting it's, better man it it's was, real good yeah it was it was an issue for a long time it'd just be I'd be pinned against the cage or I'd rarely get taken down in the middle of the cage it'd always be against the cage my centre of gravity is so high, they'd straighten me up and then they'll just pull my legs out. Yeah. And it was so simple. We knew what was going to happen, but with the low centre of gravity and the stocky guys, it's just so hard to stop. You need to get your head under theirs, your forehead against their chin and push them off and then get some space. And that's what I tried to do with this guy. I thought, I landed a knee and I thought, right, that's enough space to get away. And I thought, I pushed, I was like, get the fuck away from me. I pushed him <laughs> off. And as soon as I tried to run away to the middle, I noticed he was like holding his stomach. Yeah. He, and I thought, right, dead. He, he got cracked. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you're hurt, you're dead, man. It's not like in boxing, you'll take a knee and you get 10 seconds. Yeah. In MMA, it's, you're dead. Like, yeah. that's it. You can't show any weakness, man, or you're done. That's well, it was, it was like the um, the head kick with you. Yeah, yeah. Like, because when you, when you sent me all the stuff, I went back, I thought, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to watch. I'm just going to go through all your fights. I was watching all your fights. But that head, that head kick landed. You know, it's, that landed. Yeah. What I, what I didn't say to you was, um, so we we sat there in HQ and they were like, mate, boys pulled out. Do you want this guy? And we're like, HQ and Dunstable. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I used to work. Yeah. yeah. So I went there the day of the fight. I'd cut. It was only about three or four kilos. So I cut from sixty four to sixty one. Not much in the end. Maybe even less. I don't know. But it's still a little bit. You know, when you when you don't want to cut, it's like two or three. It's funny enough. I accepted the fight today. Was it like four or five years ago? It's the fifth of fifth of mm. April, isn't it? So the fight was on this Saturday coming. But I did that, and then uh, they were like, do you want to fight this guy at featherweight? And the guy was, he looked so roided. I'll show, there's a picture I've got on my old Instagram where he looks like he's three weights above me. Mm. And then we said, all he's got is a left head kick. We said, literally, all this guy's got is a left head kick. Four seconds into the fight, boom, left head kick. And then I'm just dancing around for a minute, like, was it like chicken legs, just yeah. running around. My coach, Sammy, said, it's the first time he's grabbed the towel. It was just a minute of me getting battered, and then I managed to get hold of him. Started shooting for takedowns myself, you know, I'm yeah. not a wrestler, but I thought, you've got to survive, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. And then for the rest of that fight, for the next round and a half, I just thought, all he's going to do is throw another head kick and knock me out. So I thought, I might as well go for this one. I, like, I'm, I'm about to get put out. I might as well go and give a, the best account of myself as I can. And as the round's gone, I noticed he was slowing down and my boxing was taking over. And then as soon as I took him down, it was I didn't even have to work for it. He just, he presented his neck to me. Like some people will look for a way out. And as soon as I saw his neck come up, I thought, he wants a way out and I'll take it sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was looking for a way out. I thought, yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll take that belt easy. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that belt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> My first time, we had no one in the crowd either. It was like two or three days in the rest. We had no one in the crowd. Rocked up, uh, co-main event. I thought, yeah. And beautiful. just took the belt. Yeah, to be fair, it was it was hard work because his kicks were just, it was like he just had baseball bats at the end of his legs. He was just swinging at me. What what is yeah. that? Is that the most painful thing? Yeah, yeah. So he, especially this guy, this is the guy that just... It's like chopping down a tree, in it? He, he was just up, bombing these kicks at me. And I remember, I think it was at the end of round two, I sort of, I leaned down and I was pretending I was adjusting my shorts, but I was looking at my shin and it was just, it looked like blood had all came to the surface of the skin. And I thought, a couple more kicks and that has just gone up everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, he, oh, he's you know, the hardest kicker I've ever thought, without a doubt. Everything he threw at me, I thought, this is just going to break something. But Do you sort of feel it when you're in there? Or does the adrenaline it depends numb how, it? It depends how early it is. Like, if, if you're in a bit of a war, you, you don't feel it as much. Like, the, the kicks to the fire will go a bit numb, and you'll notice your movement slowing down. So you're trying to spring in and out, but you just can't. You know them legs, man. Yeah. yeah. They're just done. <laughs> awful. They're awful, man. It's the calf kicks now. 
when you get the calf kicks, that's when your foot starts spasming and you can't move. It's it's mental. Like you just don't know what's going on. Your foot just sort of tightens up and then you really can't move. Well, it done Sean O'Malley like that, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that must have been. I forgot about that one. Yeah, it must have been that. And he's. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it hit lost, him right in here and it just yeah. fucked his well, thing up. It blew it out, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Something like that. But he's he, unreal, isn't he? Man? Yeah, he's, he's good. So good. And that's what he I'm saying. He him. Yeah, you got a similar style to him. I don't know if it's because you're both quite tall for the way, but it's how you move. You move in and out. He's bantam Same he's bantam well. yeah, yeah. I think he's okay, no. probably very similar frame. He's probably used to. How bit tall bigger. is he? 5'10, 5'11. Yeah, I probably, think they're, yeah. they're very. The same frame. You look very yeah. similar, like even when you're in there, like yeah. movement. But that's the thing. Like, you make so many adjustments over the years of the short guys coming in and trying to close the distance. And I'm not, like, because of my limbs, I'm just not good this close where a shorter guy is. So I need to be at a certain distance yeah. where I can just pick him up. But that's why you got the, yeah. Yeah, the hands. That's probably why it is, isn't it? Yeah. Sean O'Malley, you're so long, isn't he, man? Yeah, trying to work on the boxing from range. The push kick down the middle. I had a fight against this guy called uh, Che Ville, just a short, stocky, just a, a beast, man, absolute beast. And I kept throwing his kick and I was, during that camp, I was dropping 95 plus kilo guys with his kick, just a stab to the stomach. And on the right place, they just fall to the ground. I thought, was oh. he the one that come up to fight you? He was uh, in the weight below. Well, who was his name? Che Ville. Yeah. So oh said, yeah, I just started watching that. Yeah, so he they said um, he came up, but after the fight, I was like, what did you, cut? so he fights a flyweight. I was like, what'd you cut from? He went 64.5. I went, I cut from 64. Yeah, he like, didn't look, bi- he I looked like stocky. Your guy. Yeah, he looked yeah. massive. Yeah. They were going, you were just taller than him. I was like, I was just, t- I'm like, skin- did you see the size of my legs? <laughs> yeah, he was. I was just like, yeah, David versus Goliath. I'm just taller than him. Yeah. He was heavier than me before the fight. Man, it, yeah, he was a beast, man. I was throwing that kick at him so hard and then. I think I broke my big toe in that fight. I was throwing it so hard. It, I, I don't know what it broke on, but it broke on something, man. Is it hard to cut weight in that for you? Uh, every other fight bar the last one is usually a walk in the park, you know. I just dehydrate, salt bath. This one I had to... Um, uh, so you had Nathan Nelson the other day. So yeah. his partner, uh, the owner of the gym, not his like, life partner or anything like that. <laughs> Craig, yeah. Craig, well, they might as well be life partners. <laughs> Craig's my PT. So he gave me like a diet plan I followed for six weeks, which I think got off about seven or so pounds and then no 12 pounds 12 pounds over the six weeks then i did water loading that week and dropped seven pounds and then the day before the fight the day before the weigh-in i ended up dropping seven pounds of just water that's so I had mad a, yeah that you can just manipulate and i had it. a sauna suit on and i remember doing an hour hit session with him took it off and we we're just wringing out my clothes it was nasty i dropped 2.2 pounds there so basically a bottle of water i think that's the same thing like yeah bottle of water went to david lloyd's jumped in a sauna for 25 minutes out for a bit 20 minutes out for a bit, 15 minutes out for a bit, dropped another 2.2 pounds. Then I salt bathed and I woke up the next morning, I dropped 6.8 pounds. Do you I not s- feel much? I remember laying in bed all night and my stomach was like all the way in. I was cold. I just couldn't get warm. I don't remember sleeping. And I got up in the morning, looked in the mirror and it's the first time I had, it looked like I'd been on the set of The Walking Dead. Like I remember just panicking and splashing water <laughs> on my face thinking, this, is, this isn't good, man. I don't know how I'm going to fight in 24 hours. And then I still had... A pound to drop, I think. So sauna suit all the way up to the to Birmingham, heating all the way up. And then we got to the car park, and I said to my missus, "Go all the way to the back. I don't want my guy to see me looking like this." I thought if he sees me looking like this, then he's got like a psychological win already. So we got all the way to the back of the car park at Edge Baston, took all of my sauna suit off, put my tracksuit on and everything. And then, yeah, after the fight, I went up to him at the bar, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, you pulled up right in front of us when you did that." And I was like. For fuck's sake, we did all of this to get away from you. Yeah. It's like, we didn't make a difference. Anyway. So yeah, I was like, yeah. trying to be respectful as possible. I was like, oh, I, sometimes you're a hammer, man. Sometimes you're a nail. Yeah. That's all I said to him after the fight. I was like, sometimes you're a hammer. Sometimes you're a nail. I didn't know what else to say to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what else you say at that point? You just put your hand on the shoulder. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. The big brother treatment. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey. hey, it's good, man. Yeah. Get, get up, mate. You're embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's a sound guy. He's only young. Yeah. He's, yeah, there's a lot to learn for him, man. Is everything all right with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just keep seeing you go yeah, to. I was tough. trying to find the right time to do it. <laughs> Shit, that's mad though, man. What, did that like? Probably, how do you like come like recoup from that after? That, that was really strange because that's the first time we've done it like that. And my mate Ibra, um, he got this carbohydrate drink. So immediately we we uh, had one of them. We had electrolyte tablets. I had all my vitamins. I literally I went like full science lab mode on this one. I had like all of my vitamins: vitamin D, electrolytes, um, multivitamins. Every hour we're drinking this carb drink, like bananas, just. Trying to get the food back in. Yeah, we, we made the mistake of like refueling too quick. We went and got Nando's, man, which probably... Yeah, nah, yeah, probably not, not after the that. It's got to be like Were dry. you fasting before as well? Yeah, yeah. So, dry fasting. So we did uh, the week before it was water loading, which was hell. Just eight litres of water for the first day, eight litres of water for the second day. And I don't know if you, I don't know what the most you've ever drank in a day. Oh, is, I have drunk like eight, eight up litres. to eight litres, yeah, ten litres. It was, litres. It was pointless being at work that day. I was drinking, sitting down, going to the toilet, sitting yeah. down, going to the toilet, sitting down. It was just ridiculous then it got down to like four then two 
then nothing. And then it's it's awful. That day before the weigh-in is just hell. Right, I'm so grateful my girlfriend wasn't there because she would have just been worried about me all night. I don't remember sleeping. I just remember laying on my back in bed, just cold Shivering. And <laughs> oh, yeah. God, what? Just, just like freezing? Just, just no blanket on or anything. You I don't imagine, know why. Your body's like, like no minerals. You're dying, like, yeah, you're, so, yeah. No, you're yeah. dry and you're just mm. there like and Then we uh, went keto, I think, for the two days before it. So like no sugar, no carbs, no salt, nothing like that. So you just, any bit of joy you got from eating any sort of carb is just gone. Like... You've, I've had this boring diet for it was worth it in the end when I think when I look back on it because the two minute KO, the first exchange is is the best way to end my amateur career I think. But when you look at it, it's is fucking hell, man. But I make the most of it. Like when I'm out of camp, it's like you got to enjoy your food because it. I, the only thing I realised through fighting is food makes me happy. Yeah. So as long as I'm eating good outside of camp and as soon as it's time to switch on six weeks before and the diet starts, then it's then it's hell again. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Do you think you will maintain staying at this weight for your? I, yeah, I can't see why not. I'm 29. It's not like my body's going to change too much more. I can't see why not. Yeah. 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 The lockdown got me up to. So the max I'd blow up to was about 142. I think 145, and my coach started saying, "Watch your weight, sort of thing. Just be careful." And as soon as lockdown hit, and I'm floating, so a 61 kilo fighter. I was floating around at, what's that, like 74, 75 kilos? I remember thinking, I have to drop four and a half kilos to fight Khabib. I remember thinking, fuck, I've got to drop four and a half kilos to fight at the weight Khabib fights at. I thought, this oh, is when I've got to slow that's, down. I think I'm like, like 75. Hey, I think right. about that now. Why I'm like, I have to drop to, I'd have to drop to something. <laughs> hey, your boy, yeah. Yeah. your boy, your boy would be fighting DC around here, man. <laughs> yeah, you got to be I'll be getting ragged on, boy. Yeah. <laughs> that is mad when you... When no, you this is what I was saying though, to him like, the other day. He was saying... Oh, what what weight would he have to fight? Like, cause you know, some so people. What, I just what like are you now, like comfortably now. 73, 74. We'd, we'd seventy would be okay if you was an amateur, but if you're going pro, then it's sixty six. And he's what? Yeah. You're five six, five seven. He's low seven, five he's seven. seven. I'm saying five six. I would say five, five seven. He's five six, but I'm saying five six. I'm saying five six. Five seven, five eight. He says five seven on his yeah. Tinder, but he's five six. <laughs> yeah, probably featherweight man, sixty six kilos. So yeah. what's that? About one hundred fifty five pounds. So yeah, 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 you'd probably drop. Shit, man. Yeah, about eight kilos. But it come off easy. You you'd be surprised. He'd yeah, still be yeah, fighting yeah. monsters at featherweight, though. I, so the guy that the it's one the, line, the, the fight man. linus made fun of me for that guy. Um, I remember after the fight speaking to him, he's like, "So what did you cut from?" That seems to be like a reoccurring thing. That I don't know why everyone asked me that. And then I said sixty four, and he said seventy four. So he cut thirteen and a half kilos for this fight. That it's is insane. Crazy, when we faced off, uh, like a friend of mine, Sam Creasy, said the first thing he said when I said I'm fighting this guy, he went, "He's big." And then we did the face off, and I was like, he's not that big. I was like, my chest is bigger than his, my shoulders are bigger than his. I hit him up already. <laughs> I was like, I'm a foot taller than him, I've got the reach on him. And then when he got in the cage the next day, I thought he's brought in his bigger brother. I was like, who, <laughs> who the fuck is this guy? You're just everywhere. That's, he was just that's out, mad because when some people rehydrate, like, they can get different mad. person. Yeah. yeah. Like a different was person. this um Eglin? Eglin, yeah, Jack. See, Eglin. I couldn't find the um I couldn't find the fight. Thank God for that. Yeah, yeah I Thank couldn't God find the that. fight because I tried yeah. looking for it, but I but the one I found, which I thought it was yeah. it for some reason, was it was a submission loss in the first round. Uh, but this geezer oh, was like Connor Hutchins. Was he a skinhead guy? He was I yeah, it was Connor Hutchins. Yeah, that was like my fourth fight, I think. He was before. fucking yeah. like he wrapped round it was everything it was, was so quick, yeah. man. Like unbelievably quick. I was yeah. watching it thinking I think he was a blue belt at the time and we we only got a jiu-jitsu coach in Christ about three or four years ago, you know? So yeah. our grappling was just what we, we all sort of knew. It was like very amateur in that aspect of it. But yeah, we're, we're a lot better now of all of the grappling. But at the time, I just remember thinking, I have no idea what this guy's doing. Yeah. And it got me in like a belly down arm bar. And I just thought, my arm's about to snap. Yeah, how yeah. bad did that hurt? Because I seen so it and you, you got your, yeah. you kind of yeah. span around, but your arm looked like it yeah, was. That was I, was. I was still like a quitter at that point. You know, I think I had the loser mentality. I was a quitter. When that, a bit of adversity and I saw a way out and I took it. Like I said about the other guy, you see a way out and you take it. You yeah. Know? It's just stupid things. But then I fought a Norwegian guy uh, for a world title, battered in a world title. Ends up fighting him, battered him round one, battered him round two, dominating him round three and he got me in a deep arm bar in round three and I thought, oh, fuck, I thought, there's no, you can see my coach's face, he thought, this is it, we've just been fucking pants pulled down here sort of thing. And I remember, I can't remember if I remember feeling it or hearing it, but I felt two pops go in my arm and luckily he was quite a light guy so I just sort of pulled it out I remember laying there on top of him thinking, I have no idea if my arm's going to start flopping if I try and move it. Yeah. I had no idea if he had snapped it or not. But that pain was, that's probably the worst pain I've been in MMA, that one. I thought, I'm three rounds up, I, like five round fight. I just have to not get knocked out or subbed and I've won this belt. So I just, I pulled my arm out and I laid there for a bit thinking, I might be fucked here. And that was, yeah. Was it's this mad. your first world, world title? No, no, no. So that was um, uh, Manesh, Manesh Madhadvia, I think, the featherweight guy with a head kick. That yeah. was the first one. And that was the featherweight one. 
So that fight was at 66 kilos and God knows where that guy cut from. As soon as he was hitting me as well, he couldn't box, which was a lucky thing. He was just a very good kickboxer. His boxing was was awful. So like, what did you do before? What was you training? Kickboxing? So yeah, or like 14, a mix? Yeah, 14, I started um, kickboxing. I did about three or four weeks of it. And then uh, I got it. I won't mention his name because I think he's relatively local. But um, yeah, he was like, oh, just hit me a bit harder. Hit me a bit harder. And I think he was about... 24, 25 at the time. So I just hit him. And then he dropped me with a body shot. And I remember thinking... Is it an old bloke around here? Yeah. Old dead? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then he dropped me with a body shot. And I thought, I'm never fucking coming back here. I was like, <laughs> like I'm 14 years old, man. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then my friend stopped going. And then I just stopped going as well. And I thought... I wish I'd stuck stuck out, you know what I mean? Three or four weeks is not that long, To though, be fair, to be that's fair. Probably, yeah. 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 And then... Um, yeah, and they made you get in front of everyone in the spa. So everyone's just sitting there watching. I'm on the floor like some fucking twat, just unable to get up. Yeah. And then 18, I started again when I worked at DW. And the yoga guy, I remember him. After about three or four weeks of that, he was outside going like that, looking at him. I think, this is not the guy you want to pick a fight with sort of thing. And he went out there and I don't know what happened. But then they come in and told us, yeah, he's not teaching here anymore. So that stopped again. And then, yeah, I started Prime at 20. And like I said, the first four years, just stu- stupidly mucking around, but... What is your favourite part of martial art? Like, what, what would you say your martial art is? Everyone says boxing. I, I, I love the kickboxing side of it, but I'd say in my fights, I'm probably boxing heavy. I would prefer kickboxing than anything, but yeah. Bo- uh, I what? would say kickboxing, I think majority like people hands. say boxing. Yeah. yeah, it's just like these people, I can hit them from far away and they can't hit me. That's yeah, the best yeah. thing. Hit and not get yeah. hit. It's, yeah. Probably boxing, man, yeah. Do you enjoy the uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Because you hear, like, Joe Rogan and Jocko oh, yeah. talk about it and they're like, it's one of the best things no someone he, could... No, he, I have this argument with my coach every week. I turn up to the gi classes without my gi on and he's like, where is it? Oh, it's in the wash again. Like, every week my gi is in the wash. <laughs> like, every, it's, every day it's in the washing machine. But um, no gi I love. Like, submission wrestling is, is good, but the gi stuff's awful, man. It just... When people pull it, it burns your neck. I feel like all of my injuries come from gi jiu-jitsu. Like, the toe coming out got caught in someone's trousers. And as he kicked his leg out, my little toe was just poking out like a, a right angle. And I thought, every time I pick up an injury, it's because of this fucking gi. Like every single time. I suppose you wouldn't be using a gi. You'd no. never be using a That's gi. The yeah. thing. Like, Why a, gi- they, a lot of them wear it though, didn't it's, they? It's just oh, traditional yeah. jujitsu, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's, there's a grading belt system that you can get and everyone wants um, to get graded and move up and that. I, I would happily be a blue belt that's very good than a black belt that's, well, if you're going to be a black belt, you're going to be very good anyway, but... I, I'm not too fussed about the grading system. I just want to get better at jujitsu. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. yeah, you're not. Wrestling too... is something we're working on and jujitsu. They're, they're the two things. Stop people from taking me down and just beat them up on the feet. That's that's the plan going forward. Is there any like really good wrestlers in England? Because England's not really a wrestling yeah. place. Like you don't, mm. they don't, we don't do wrestling. Like yeah. America, you do wrestling in it's, school. Yeah, they do it at school. It's like massive, Russia, you do yeah. wrestling yeah, yeah. In from really young. England's not, we don't do yeah. wrestling. Really. I think you are. Wrestling guy is. Tom Aspinall looks good, but he's more of a grappler than just an outright wrestler, mm. you know. I can't think of anyone that goes in the UFC and dominates because you're against so many American guys and Russian guys in you, so it's, you're never going to go there and dominate. And even the Russian style of wrestling is completely different from the yeah, American yeah, style yeah, of wrestling. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's they've got like a- it, MMA man. wrestling. Their yeah, wrestling Sambo, looks more yeah, yeah. like MMA. So they'll have a gi jacket on and they'll be in their Tudo shorts and that's Sambo and... Those guys are crazy, man. Like, those, those guys are nuts, you know. Like, I'm not fighting. What is that thing? It's when you fight a guy with um, an Islamic name, first name, and um, was it a Russian second name? Yeah. Like a Dagestani yeah. second yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to fight that guy. You don't want that Chechen guy. or something yeah, like Chechen that. Yeah. Name, yeah. If I get matched up with that in my first five, six fights, no. I don't want to say no 20 fights, but I'm saying no to that one. <laughs> don't give me a Russian. I'd have a French guy or a Swedish or a Norwegian guy. Give me that, but... Any Russian guys think that's stuff that, man. Is it really frustrating coming into a fight and like getting your back just put up against the cage? Because like, yeah, they always yeah. want to wrestle you. Yeah. So is that just a frustrating thing? It is. And we know it's we know it's going to happen most fights. But this guy, um, he was from a Muay Thai gym. And it might have been gamesmanship from them. About two weeks before the fight, they posted saying, um, looking for a wrestling coach, jujitsu coach, and a grappling coach. And Sammy, my coach, was like, they don't even have a coach. I was like, I'll apply to go be their wrestling coach. I'll go teach him. So I was thinking, this guy is going to strike me. He's a Muay Thai fighter. It's going to be a Muay Thai match and I'm going to just box his head off and I'm going to finish him early. And then we're in the change room warming up and it's just a curtain like just stopping each person from seeing things. And Linus is just on his chair and he's like, he's wrestling over there, Dunk. I was like, I was like no, 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 don't worry. He, he's going to be a Muay Thai fighter. Don't worry. And he's just like, He's going to come out and wrestle you straight away. <laughs> he's practicing takedowns. He's going to wrestle you. And he's just leaning back watching. You're not supposed to, but I was like, I ain't going to stop him. And then, uh, yeah, I kept saying to him, Linus, no disrespect. You don't know what you're talking about here. This is MMA. This isn't boxing. <laughs> I was like, he ain't going to do it. 
right on the bell. He just grabs me. I thought, fuck, I should have listened to Linus. So I was like, I should have listened to the guy. Is but, it good having like a friend that's a boxer, yeah, like a really was, good boxer as well? You know, it's the first time he's ever been in my corner. We um we did a bit of work together, not as much as I would like to. He just we do some MMA sparring, some boxing sparring for that camp and it's just, we'll go out for a coffee afterwards, you know, we'll go for a coffee after, he'll, he'll beat the shit out of me in boxing for like 10 rounds, then we'll go for a coffee, like, like nothing's happened, you know, we just immediately, we forget about it, go for a coffee, it's fine. But yeah, that one was quite nice because I thought if it goes later on into the fight and him and Sammy can come in, I had Pierce, who was a really good jiu-jitsu guy in my corner, he was shouting some stuff at me, Sammy, my head coach, Len Linus, I thought if it goes to round two, they'll come in and tell me, like, you're not doing this right, when you're jabbing, your hands coming, just simple things, I thought that'd be good to have that as well as my head coach. It, well, it didn't go that far, but it'd have been good to have that in round two. What's know? it like listening to him though? Do you ever get like flustered and you just like yeah, all delirious? Yeah, so, you're like, so <laughs> if you if you watch that fight again and turn it all the way up, you've got to listen very carefully. Which it's, fight is this one? Uh, the last one. The so last I'm one. against the cage and I've got like a left overhook and a right underhook. And then I think it's Pierce or Sammy. One of them shouts out, left underhook, left underhook. And as soon as I get a left underhook, it allows me the ability to turn my hips out and then yeah. throw the knee. So that, that one bit of advice won me the fight because the knee essentially won the fight. And then the hands were just there to finish him off, but the knee had stopped him, you know. Is it just about timing them things? The knee, yeah. He was he was rushing forward with his stomach hunched over. Like if he's mm. upright, it's not gonna be as effective. But when he was he was I think he was terrified to strike me, to be honest, because he was a Muay Thai guy that was pinning me against the cage for two minutes. I don't think that makes no yeah, sense. No, you know? was, yeah, no, he was Muay Thai just... fighter from a Muay Thai gym, and he's pinning me against the cage. I thought he didn't want any separation yeah. there. So as soon as I could feel him coming in, bang through the knee. I threw the second knee because I didn't realise how much damage the first one had done. And then when I peeled off and saw he was done, yeah. Just bom, bom, of punch. Yeah, I literally, <laughs> technique went out the window, man. I just fucking leapt at him. I thought, I'm going to put him out here. This is going to look good. And then as soon as I saw his eyes go bang, I was like, that's it, done. He's gone to sleep. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to link the video up Shut for up anyone um, yeah, watching and stuff one. like that. Yeah, no, they were laughing about <laughs> yeah. it. They were like, oh my God, yeah. he is good at striking. We knew yeah, he, would, that, he had knockout foul. You know, that's the thing that wound me up was just, like, I never, ever sat down on any punches. Everyone was like, oh, so you haven't got any knockouts. I just hadn't really hit anyone hard. I was just touching people and then, Maybe it's because I know the gloves are small and if I get caught in an exchange, I might get clipped, you know, and I don't like the 50-50 chances. I'd rather it be 80-20 to me, stay at distance, and then when he's hurt like that, finish him. And that's how I carry on fighting. If I smell any sort of, like, danger, I think he's hurt, I'll plant my feet and I'll try and knock the guys out, especially with those four-ounce gloves on. Like, absolutely. But until then, if it's 50-50, there's no need to make that silly decision and stand in front of someone, you yeah, know. For real, it's, yeah. These are four-ounce gloves, man. So you get clipped, you're going to go to sleep. Like, the yeah. four-ounce gloves, I can't <laughs> stress out. It. Yeah, you get hit with them, you're done. Like, even and and that clip. was like Frankie was here talking about um, eight ounce gloves, yeah, yeah, and they're big, they're the so biggest sort of gloves. We, and he's saying they fucking hurt, yeah. And you're talking about four ounces, we, we fight in the eights at amateur, but the, the only difference is like you like a boxer getting hit with eight ounce gloves, they're going to be better punches, they're going to have more power, and you're taking more punches because all you're doing is punching. Whereas in MMA, you don't take as many punches because you're at like more of a distance most of the fight. When you do get hit with them, like he's yeah, you know, you think your bell's got wrong, you're like, gee, I need to move my feet, like, yeah, you move your feet or you're going. And especially if someone catches with these bits, like just exposed knuckle, it's, I'll rip you open that stuff, yeah. Do you hear all the criticisms and stuff like that from people outside, like what, commentators? No, but like the uh, like the commentators saying you didn't have the knockout power and stuff like that. I, re- I reckon there probably would have been yeah. people doing maybe like amateur yeah. um, papers and stuff like that. Like, yeah. do you hear I, criticism or do you just... I, I, would, I try and I watch my fights, Not like I get back to the hotel and I try and buy the stream. I try and watch it straight away and watch and listen to the commentary. I want to hear what people are saying. I don't mind that stuff, the the criticism. I don't care about it too much. That Obviously, the knockout power won't bother me because I thought, I do have knockout power. Yeah. I know <laughs> at the gym when I'm hitting pads. I was like, if that lands on someone, it's putting them to sleep. But I just hadn't done it yet. But the other stuff doesn't, you, you can't let it bother you. Stay in your own lane. kill you. Yeah, you can't yeah. let it bother you, man. Yeah. But I do just want to touch on when I, because obviously I ask everyone that's coming on, like just a bit about yourself so yeah. we can build up a little bit of a story going forward. And something you sent to me, um, you said about it was the Linus one where he was yeah. saying um, you got uh, submitted yeah, yeah. in yeah. the first oh, round TKO'd, or yeah, TKO'd, TKO'd yeah, yeah. in the first round. And you said that was an important moment for you. It was, yeah, it, for so many reasons. It was, uh, so basically we had, I, it was Cage Warriors Academy, which you go on that show, you look good, you two or three fights on that show, you go through the Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors, you win the title, it's a golden ticket to the UFC. That's an amateur fighter's route to the UFC and it starts at Cage Warriors. So I thought, yeah, fuck it, we'll take that fight. It's against a French guy, um, Simone uh, Rivioli or something like that. I can't remember, I can't pronounce his name, so I don't want to butcher it anymore. But I thought, I looked at him and I thought I can beat this guy. I'd had, uh, it was not long after I broke that big toe. So 
barely trained because of that. I was ill and I thought, you know what? I'm going to beat this guy regardless. We'll take this fight. We won't sell many tickets, but next time we'll go, we'll look really good in the next fight on Cage Rose Academy. I said to my coach, let's have one or two fights on the show, try and build up a name. And then the lad called Jack Eglin, I think he was a champion at that point. He was number two in the UK. Number one was, you know, Mohamed Mukhaev. He, no. He's just got to the UFC, the Dagestani lad. English, he's from Manchester and Dagestan. You, 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 yeah, that's he's is, he wrestling? is he a wrestler? And he's a man. He, he's basically like the mini Khabib. Oh, yeah. Check him on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Mohammed Mukayev. He was number one. And Jack Eglin was about fourth or fifth at the time, but he was number two. Like he would have smoked any of those guys, you know. He had a couple of losses through people just laying and praying on him. And I thought, after a couple of fights, we'll fight this guy for the title. It'll be good. And you can ask my coach. He literally just goes, Do you want to fight Jack Eglin for the title? This was two days before the fight. And I was like, yeah, let's fucking do it. Like, not even thinking about, I've not trained, I've not done anything. And then as soon as I said yes, it reality sort of set in. I thought, this guy's big. This is going to be a tough fight. Like, I don't know how we're going to get through this. I remember on the day, my hands were sweating. My girlfriend was holding my hands going, your hands are clammy. You're usually so relaxed. I was like, I just know what I'm getting myself into here sort of thing. I thought, this is a real problem. Got in a cage. What happened, happened. He clipped me quite early. And then, uh, yeah, it was, it was rough. I remember being in the change room after that fight. Just said to my coach, he's going to go to the toilet. I remember sitting in the back just thinking for about 20 minutes. I was crying for a bit. Came back out and I was just like, oh, before that, they get you and the other guy in the medical room. So I'm sat here. He sat there on top of the world and I'm sat here just at rock bottom. And the doctor's like, oh, we just need to check your nose, mate. So I thought he was about to pop it back in. Luckily, it wasn't broken. But then we walked out at the same time as well. And 20, 30, 40 of his fans are there celebrating with him. I just had a few. I had my girlfriend just at the time. I walked out, saw one of my friends. They were like, yeah, it just happens, man. It happens. So then we're on the car on the way home. And literally, like he said, he's just like, how soon is too soon? And I was like, you're just a fucking... He is he is savage. Like that, that's too yeah. savage. That's when like, you're saying you cried for a bit and yeah, all this, yeah, yeah. and your man just comes like, in the car and he wants to... He wants to, yeah. he wants to he wants, it's an emotional moment. He should, he got to be there for the boy. Sometimes you've got to get down yeah, with you know, you've got to have moments like that though, but man. But what he didn't mention was, so like two or three days later, we're, <laughs> we're at the gym and he's doing a one-to-one -one me working on my head movement, you know? So it's those little things afterwards. He's there working with my head movement, this, that, and the other. But he just, he made light of it, I think. Almost like you were... Literally, all that happened was I took a head kick I was a bit wobbly got punched fell against the cage two punches on the ground and the whole time I'm like this trying to defend referee stops it and I just fell on the floor like that like couldn't believe it sort of thing I was there the whole time and he's like oh dunk mate you were jumping up the ref's ankles was that you, your first TKO yeah, loss first, yeah first TKO loss so it was it was rough it was emotional for me and he's like you were jumping up the ref's ankles you, you didn't know where you were you were dancing around you were sleeping for a little bit I was thinking fuck this guy's just but the thing what he was doing was making light of it I think. yeah and it's the same like if like oh god I, I don't want to see Touch him lose word. yeah he doesn't want to see me lose but like uh, yeah we don't want to see each other yeah. lose That's what he, he was saying that though and he was like yeah, he's like hey man it. I can't slip up now because yeah. the boy's yeah, going to be straight exactly. in the car afterwards but we give him shit we say stuff like everyone he fights is Willie Warburton that's the one we always go back to Willie Warburton everyone fights Willie Warburton for a win yeah. we say um, the Tyler Denny one I always say that he paid the refs I'm like you definitely didn't win that fight man how much are you paying the refs for this <laughs> it's, it's nothing big but it's just and sometimes yeah. people don't know how to react in a situation yeah, yeah. like like it's, that. Yeah, like it's, it's just yeah. sometimes people's personalities to just yeah. just laugh and make a joke of it. And light. like that was the important thing about that fight. Because I remember thinking, this is this is rough. This is going to be. I don't know how I'm going to come back from this sort of thing. This is rock bomb. And he just made light of it. And I thought, yeah, it is. That's all it is. Really, it's just a loss. It's, it's just life. You know what I mean? It's yeah, just another. You're going to get another stone. You've got to move past it. Yeah. yeah. But but the thing that uh, stuck out to me was that you mentioned it in like. It was with your main things, like so. It was with your accomplishments, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. winning the title, just forget the losses, man. Uh, your last yeah. KO and then a loss. Yeah. So but the other three were all wins, world title wins, beating a friend at the time it was a training partner, picking up world titles, finishing people knockouts, last amateur fight, and then that. And it was just a huge one. It was my first big step up against a really, really good guy. But yeah, you can't forget your losses. You just got you got to remember these things. What did I do wrong? How can I change that? Like take everything more seriously. You know, what? For everyone. It's like nowadays as well. There's something wrong with losing. This yeah, is the yeah, problem. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with losing. Like you can come back. You just, loads of yeah, people I come mean, back. There's loads of things long, wrong with losing. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's loads. You know, you only say that when you've lost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. When you're winning, you don't want to lose at all, man. And it's well, what was the quote? Yeah, what what, what like quote did you say to me? Life. Oh, it's a rough, ugly, and unforgiving sport. But man, it's beautiful when you're winning. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful when you're winning. Like when you're the guy going over to the guy putting your hand on their shoulder, going, "It'll be okay." 
that's great when you're that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, when, yeah. That, when, when you're not that guy, it's like, get the fuck off me, man. Like, don't touch me. But would um, you do the little one where you're on your knees and you're like, just waiting for him to, like, oh, you might knock someone clean out as yeah. well. And you're, you're just sitting there, and I'm thinking that's well, too soon, man. I just, I thought, just calm myself down because I thought I was going to say or do something stupid, you know. I thought just, I took three really deep breaths, got on my knees, and I was thinking, just lay it, stay in the middle of the cage. And if you watch the video, you look over my shoulder. My, my mate Ibra, who he doesn't touch alcohol, he's Muslim, but I think he was punch drunk, so he's got his top off waving <laughs> stuff around in the crowd. But, um, was he, was he, re- I think I seen him before you walked in and he had his yeah, shirt yeah, and he, he was, was doing yeah, all of that. He, was, he had a rough fight before that, man. Did that he? was his debut and it was rough. I said to all the guys, I was like, sometimes you have fights like that, sometimes you have fights like this, where it's two minutes of no work. All I did was minute 40 seconds of cage defense like you do in training and then 20 yeah. seconds of moving around and knocking someone out and you need that. and you you need both yeah you, that, that makes you a better fighter than one he had because you'll take more opportunities when they present themselves like in fights like that when you get someone hurt and they're wobbling around you think right i'm fucked i'm gonna take two or three breaths now catch my breath whereas in reality you gotta think kill him if he's hurt and i'm not kill him sort of thing like you've got to finish the fight as quick as you can because it will turn just on a heartbeat it's yeah. insane how quick it can turn yeah does the amateurs or the amateur of uh, what you were fighting in, do they do the knees where you three points of contact on the floor? Yeah, so it's three points. But there's no knees to the head at amateur. No, no elbows, knees to the no head knees. at all. Yeah. Not even a flying knee. No, no, no. That's the thing. So it's, as soon as you go pro, it's everything. Elbows to the head, knees to the head. Elbows That's to the why head you weren't ground. throwing elbows. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, no. As soon as I go pro, I'm going to be... Because I was thinking, because you're, you're, you're quite you're tall, because yeah. yeah. you're tall and rangy, knees. I was thinking... These smaller guys, you might be better elbow. Elbowing, Not that yeah. I fucking know anything, but I'm just saying, like yeah. Brian or like Brian Ortega, Frankie yeah, Edgar, yeah. he he was he couldn't do it because of his range, so he just come elbows. in with elbows. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a thing that will like like defer the takedown will be knees. As soon as someone shoots in on me in the middle and I throw a big knee, let's say it hits them on the chest or the shoulder and they get me down, they're on top thinking, "Fuck, that yeah, was so close down. to my face." Yeah. I need to be careful next time, even if it doesn't land. They're now thinking, "I need to be very close. I need to be very careful." Because if that one hits me in the face, I'm out. So next time he goes for it again, he might hesitate. He might think twice. And that hesitation will give me enough time to register it and, and sprawl or move mm. away. But that's what it is. It's just, the knees and the elbows will be a huge benefit to me, I think, when we go pro. Yeah. Obviously, I don't want to be knee or elbowed in the face. Whereas no, they but don't. Can, but you can get more yeah, I think, it, I think, think it's, yeah, yeah, I think it's <laughs> definitely going to help yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. with people trying to shoot in yeah. and just giving them that little, oh, I need, I'll take the head. I yeah, need a head. Exactly, yeah, I mean... I can knee to the head from standing as well, where I've got the long limbs, long legs. I can, like the five, six, five, seven guys, yeah, easily. Just get a clinch. I can knee so to the head. So you like from... the tallest in, in your way? Yeah, I thought was a guy there people was like tall six lot? foot or six foot one, which yeah. was, I, haven't, I didn't see him on the scales. You know what I mean? I didn't see his yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, that's tall, man. You're coming in that light. Yeah. I, I didn't see him on the scales is all I'll say. Like, he was, he was big. I remember that's the first weigh-in photo where I'm looking up at someone. Every other time, it's like looking down at them. And it's imposing sometimes when you're looking down at someone because they're looking up at you. And then you know, they already know. They, I always go down, I look at their arms, I think, how much range has this guy got? Like, is he big? Where, where is he big? Is he big in the right places? Like his shoulders, his back, you know, all of that stuff. If he's got big biceps, I don't give a fuck. That makes no difference to me. He's going to be strong for about 30 seconds in a clinch. That's it. Hmm. But you, you, you get your, like, your visual of the person and you go from there when you weigh in. Most of the time, people look like shit because they're all cut and wet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to touch on the uh, Tommy Gibbs fight. Yeah. Obviously, former teammate. Yeah, that was that was a tricky one, you know, because we had, we had been sparring a lot together. He trains in Elite TC and Leighton Buzzard and then we'd go down there regularly and he would always beat me. Strike him would be close but then he'd take me down and just smoke me on the ground. Like, submit me, just absolutely smoke me. And I remember um, I was supposed to fight this really good guy and then he was supposed to fight someone else as well and they both pulled out close to the fight and the promoter was like, do you, do you want to fight each other? You're both the same weight. Like, saves me looking for two new bantamweights sort of thing. How about you fight each other? I remember just messaging him on Snapchat going, have you spoke to James? And he was like, yeah, what do you think? I was like, I'm happy to do it if you are. Because at this point, like, my anxiety was like through the roof. I couldn't do anything. I got a job at a bar just so I could interact with people because it was that bad. And he was like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. And then we did the face off. And again, that was a huge relief for me because the signs I look for now are the signs I had at the time. Like, is the guy chewing gum? Chewing gum is always a tell sort of thing. I was like, right, he's nervous. I could see all of these things because I had them before. And when I faced off of him, we were just smiling at each other. It was just the complete polar opposite of how I usually was. So we're there facing off each other, smiling. His coaches and that were the ones that were more serious. They were like telling us to be serious sort of thing. And I was like, he's, he's my friend at the it's end of the day. To be serious, we're going to do this as professional as possible. And then when we got in the cage, I walked out calm as I'd ever been. The, like the warm up was incredible. I wasn't nervous. Usually I'm heavy, sluggish, lump in my throat. It's like I'm about to go out and and fight and it wasn't like I'm about to go out and win at that point it was I'm about to go out and fight 
don't embarrass yourself. And that was my thought process at the time, which is so negative looking back on it, you know, yeah. but at the time I couldn't help it because it was like, <clears throat> I just can't catch a win. I couldn't win at, the, at this point. And then walked out and yeah, we, we had the fight and there was a few points where I definitely felt I was holding back and I would say probably the same on his part. But um, yeah, when I got my hand raised at the end, it's just huge sigh of relief. And then literally, I think it was two weeks. So that's probably two weeks ago, five years, five years back. So then I got a phone call today asking if I wanted to fight on the eighth against that Manesh guy. And my confidence was through the roof at that point because I just beat a guy that always beats me in training. So I was yeah. like, I can, I can be a big game player if I need to be. You know, on the day I might not be great in training all, all week and that but on the day I can turn up when I need to so I thought I'd take this fight and then yeah like on the day against that guy I turned up again Yeah. despite going through that four second adversity of the head kick so I, that was a huge huge moment for me as well both of them I do want to touch on obviously the anxiety in that because obviously on here we like yeah. talking about mental health we like checking because yeah. the boy, boys don't really talk about nah, that nah, sort nah. of stuff well, me Linus and Jack we're quite good at that sort of stuff yeah, yeah we're quite good with each other but but um how what is that what was that like dealing with all of that at the time like it what was, struggles did you have with anxiety so i was at university doing graphic design and i remember uh, it was one of the weirdest points ever because at the time i didn't know nothing about it and, and nobody really did so i went to do a presentation and at college my work was crap but my presentations got me the grades i needed to get so i did this first presentation at uni and i stood up in front of everyone and then so you know he center next to the gary coopers and dunstable yeah, yeah yeah so it's up there so i'm literally stood in front of everyone got my laptop out put it down Went to speak and I just got a lump in my throat. And I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, excuse me. Tried to speak again. Same thing. And then I went bright red and I could feel it. Like, I went bright red. And just without thinking, I just said to everyone, like, just give me a minute, please. And then I walked around behind everyone. I didn't look. They must have all been like, where the fuck is he going? <laughs> like, where the fuck is this guy going? I grabbed my laptop. And this must have all taken about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And I slowly put it in my bag, grabbed my memory stick, grabbed all my stuff. And I just walked out of the building. And I just started... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just started walking home and I got to Yum Yums and I thought, I'm about to collapse. I don't know what's going on. So I sat down and I thought, what the fuck have I just done? I was like, everyone was calling me. I was thinking, I said to them, I was like, I feel really sick. I've just, I, was, I said to them, I was sick when I got out of the building. I wasn't, obviously, but I was like, I was just sick when I got outside the building. I need to go home. I've been really ill. Tell them I'm sorry, sort of thing. And then similar things happened like this two or three times. And then my teacher at the time, she was saying to me, how can you do, like the fighting, I did that as well to try and get past it. But she said to me, how can you go in a cage and fight someone? and not do a presentation in front of 20 people you know. And I just said to her, I've got no idea. It's just, it's different. But she ended up basically saying to me, if I don't do the presentations, I'll fail. So I just stopped going into uni. Quit yeah. Uni. yeah, basically stopped uni because of it. And I carried on fighting and I thought, I'll get a job at a bar. So I started working at HQ just to force myself to interact with people regularly. Because it was, I was just, I was going out with my mate Liam to cookies and that was it. Like some fucking idiot, like 18 year old going to cookies or whatnot. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, I remember any time I had to deal with something at the bar, I'd just say, I'll oh, give us a second. And I just walk out the back and just stand out the back for five, ten minutes because it's like just trying to calm myself down, go again. And then, yeah, just like literally fighting through it, through the MMA, through whatnot, just interacting with the guys at the gym. And the confidence you get from from being able to fight and defend yourself goes through the roof. And it just, it sort of just stopped at one point. I can't remember when. I couldn't put a date on it. But our friend of mine, a biologist, uh, Dan Spencer, just said to me, and he's he's not very good with people, but he's, he's so smart and he's so funny. He just goes, it's just a chemical imbalance. And I was like, no, no, no. I think it's like maybe genetics. Maybe it's passed on. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. He's like, no, it's just chemical imbalances. How much alcohol are you drinking? I was like, probably more than I should be. He's like, what time are you going to bed? Yeah. I was like, I'm at uni. So probably like 4, 5 a.m. Get And he goes, what time are you getting up? I was like, probably 2 p.m. till 4 p.m. And he was like, well, there you go. How much vegetables are you eating? I was like, probably none. And he's like, well, of course you're feeling like shit. Of course you've got your chemicals like all over the place. Like, And when he said it to me like that, at first I sort of thought it was really disrespectful. I thought, you don't understand. Yeah, but yeah. Maybe he did really understand. Yeah, you know? yeah. Maybe he did. But I couldn't put a date on it, but I would definitely attribute it to, to the MMA and working at a bar. Just, did you change all that stuff around with yeah, your diet yeah. well, and your the, sleep? The and... diet got a bit better. The sleep was a big problem for a long time. But I just stopped drinking as much. We'd go out first day mm. and get like blackout drunk. We'd go out on a Saturday and get blackout drunk. I was drunk a week before that fight. Like blackout drunk a week before that fight. Going into yeah, that, round three. that takes his toll. That's like John well, Jones man. stuff. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going into round three, I thought, if he kicks me in the stomach again, not only am I going to stop, I'm going to vomit every day. Yeah. I was like, I just, yeah, I wasn't taking, like, that tells you just as much you need to know about how serious I was taking at that point. You know, drunk, blackout, like, blackout drunk a week before the fight. Like, that's comical. Like, I don't know who yeah, I thought not, I was at yeah, the time. That's but, not good. Yeah, it was, yeah, just mental. The walking out of the uni that day, I just had no idea what was going on in my head. That's and a I just, crazy yeah. fucking little story. Yeah, it's just, I, just, I remember I got to, so basically the other end of town by Yum Yums. I just sat on the bench there and I thought, what on earth have I just done? I was like, I've got no idea how I've got this far. I've just sat on the bench and thought, that was nuts. So then, yeah, basically I kept, they kept making jokes at uni saying, oh, we've got a presentation tomorrow, so Dunk's probably going to be ill. 
And I was like, yeah, I ain't fucking coming in. Yeah. And I wouldn't go in. I'd go in for all of the week. And then like some days, my like the guys at the uni would say to me, like, I've got a presentation today. Didn't you get the email? And just my heart would race. My heart would race. And I'd, and I'd go at lunchtime. I'd, I wouldn't even take the chance. I wouldn't even take the chance. Fucking hell. Yeah. And I remember they ended up passing me in the end. They got like uh, the minimum requirements to pass because they... They want their like grade structure. Yeah, they good. they need people. Yeah, to you know. Through, so yeah. they want oh our pass rate is eighty seven percent. Whereas if I go down, it drops down to eight eight five. You know, I don't know. But so yeah, when was the turning point where you started feeling better within yourself and that? Or just... I can't even remember because I wouldn't even I wouldn't even go to meals with my friends. You know what I mean? Like the big parties and the meals because I couldn't sit on the table because if the attention come over to me, I just sort of panic and just get flustered. You so know? it got quite bad then. It, yeah, it did. Yeah, luckily a fr- I won't mention his name, but a friend of mine as well had a similar thing at the time. I think. Yeah, I think he's better now as well. We talk about it every so often, but like you like said, not as much as we should really. But I'd say that maybe close to the Tommy Gibbs fight, that one, because the confidence I got through that fight, I was like, I could be good at this if I started taking it seriously. And it's just, I think it's confidence through preparation for me. If I prepared myself well, I'd be good. Maybe for the graphic design, I didn't prepare myself well. And then it's trigger points. Like as soon as you, like a snowball effect, as soon as you let one thing beat you, one little thing beat you, you don't do it again. Yeah. That beats you again someone mentioned presentations and your mind can play tricks on you as well man and that's all it is like someone goes presenting today i got nervous and then they're like this leads to that and then they go you're gonna be in front of your friends you're gonna have to speak in front of your friends almost like a presentation and it just it got so bad to the point where my only interactions with people were basically when i was drunk so we'd go out thursday night i go to my mate's house we'd get drunk go out interact with people drunk so they're not real interactions wake up on saturday hung over i'd barely go out uh, Friday, sorry, and then we'd go out again and do the same thing on Saturday. Sunday wouldn't exist because I was that hungover. Monday, I'd sleep until two, three, four, whatever. Same with Tuesday, Wednesday. You, and you were probably Thursday. just depleted, man. Yeah. Your body was just yeah. like, no mass. Yeah, yeah no mass. Yeah, <laughs> 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 but, um, it's, yeah it's, it's, I, I don't know, a lot, like, I always argue with uh, certain people, they say, oh, it's not this, it's not that. But now I'm fully on like my friend's side of things where it's bio- biology yeah, it's just chemical imbalances like I think so yeah yeah I listen 100%. to do you listen to any Jordan Peterson or anything like yeah, that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so he I'm says, big on diet now, man. I think like diet's a big one sleep yeah. diet yeah. going to bed at a certain time well, like he says the first thing he asked them is not even what time you go to bed what time do you get up every day he says the most important one is what time you get up so you could go to bed at like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock 12 o'clock 7 o'clock he goes as long as you get up at the same time every single day you'll be okay and there's a book I read. Yeah, no, I see, there's I there's see something that about that as well. Yeah, yeah. What time you get up? Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, you should keep this. You should get up the same, same time routine. every single day. Otherwise, if you change, because that's what I used to do. Sometimes I'd think, oh, it's Monday. I'm going to change my alarm Have from six yeah, to yeah. six thirty, and I'd wake up and I feel fucked up. Yeah, you've just got to consistently go through the day, consistently go through the week. And there's a book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. He's a professor. Of I've seen him. He's on Joe Rogan. Yeah, I watched him a couple of times. Because I lay in bed with my missus, and we used to put podcasts on when we went to bed. I remember putting it on and I was thinking, this is really good. I must stay up for this. And I just stayed up the whole night listening to it. I've listened to it about three or four times. I bought his book, read through it. And then I was working um, as a DO at the Luton police station for a while, doing two days, two nights. So I stopped reading the book while I was doing that because I just knew it'd make me quit that yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I found something else, yeah, I ended up leaving it because I thought it's... Did you get the glasses and that, it, for REM sleep, is it? Or when it gets yeah, to yeah. a certain point, it's you like put like them on. cycle, 90 minute yeah. cycles of REM sleep and... It's mad like, how that stuff works. Like, people don't realise that having a good sleep, like a deep good sleep, yeah. is powerful. Well, alcohol, man. when you drink, you're sedated. You're not sleeping. Yeah. He goes, it's sedation, not sleep. And people don't realise that. No, like, same for drugs as well. Yeah, Imagine yeah, how yeah. many people drink every drink night and, and it's like, yeah. they're like, nah, I'm normal. But you're only working yeah. out maybe 70% the yeah, next yeah, day. Yeah. Imagine what, what you could be like. Yeah, because you, you get yeah, people imagine, that work yeah. good, but imagine what you were like working yeah. out 100%. Because yeah, it's like you said with the drink, like, but some people generally need a drink to go out and speak to people. Yeah, yeah. It's the Dutch courage thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and for me, it wasn't even that for girls. It was that for anyone. Yeah, you know, besides my friend at the time, it was that. Right, well, well, just a coat. Yeah, but yeah, it was just yeah. to go out and speak to anyone. It was, and it's a snowball effect. It keeps spiraling and getting worse and worse. And the original point might not be anything. It might not be nothing bad at all. It might be something so minuscule. But by the time it's got all the way to its end, it's something huge. You just like compound it, compound yeah. it. Yeah, like, it wouldn't even be going to town because you'd bump into someone you knew. You know, it'd be just mental things. And and now you're sitting on a podcast, yeah, three yeah. people in a room, you don't know any of yeah, us, well, and you're out here. bricking it on my way up here. Yeah. Which are? Yeah, I was nervous at the start, but it's, you just you get past those things. Yeah, you? yeah. I just, I thought, just, you force yourself through stuff. Like, I remember the fights as well. I'd, I'd try and say to myself, there's no pressure here. There's no pressure. This is just a fight. Whatever happens, happens. And I got to the bigger fights where I thought, this is huge. I would try and stack as much pressure on myself as I could. To the point where I got those nervous feelings again. Because some fights I go to bed the night before, not even thinking about a fight. I thought this is nothing. I was, I'm calm as anything. 
I'm going to beat this guy. It means nothing. But then I would, those fights, I would try and put as much pressure on myself as I could. So I'm up at night thinking I'm sweating. I'm causing myself to sweat through nerves. I think just to sort of push myself a bit more, just to get through that. Just Yeah. Something, I don't know. Maybe it was good. Maybe it was bad for me. I thought it was good. But just to put the pressure on myself. So when I do get to a big stage, it's like I'm almost used to it. Almost used to that pressure. Yeah, you've had trying it. To, yeah, yeah, trying to put as much on it as I could. There's nothing wrong with that. If it works. It's not hard enough. We're just interrupting this podcast for a quick sponsorship break. This sponsor is a sponsor we use ourselves. You don't get the best logos or thumbnails unless you head over to our brother at Oli D Graphics on Instagram. He does everything, ranging from logo designs, illustrations, animations, and much, much more. Head over to his Instagram, shoot him a little DM, say the Fijian sent you or the Ginge. He might even chuck in a little extra. With excellent customer service, brilliant pricing, it really, really is a no-brainer. All his links are in the description, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening to us on Spotify. And now we get back with the pod. Thank you. Some army guy's like 50, but he only sleeps like... It's not something. Yeah, like he, 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 yeah he's generally like, yeah. He, well, the count he goes like is. 10. But Every... saying that, he goes to bed at 10. To be fair, I'll go to bed at 9. So he gets yes, up at half three, four. Though. Yeah, he said he yeah. can't sleep. I think he said he can't. I think he said he wall. can't fucking sleep, yeah, man. He goes, he in. goes through in the middle of the night. He he just wakes up. I'll show you a video after because yeah. I saved the video. I sent when he was on Joe Rogan. He's like, I'm fucking hungry. I wake up hungry, <laughs> and he's Jocko willing. You never watched Jocko? Oh, you no, need. We will we'll, we'll show you him after. Oh, you like him? Yeah. You will fucking no, love him. He's got a book. You know Goggins? Justin Goggins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Goggins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all like. He's got a book called Extreme Ownership. But I swear down, it's the best book I've ever read for like taking taking ownership of your life and like structuring things and seeing how a lot of things are actually your fault and yeah. how he oh, breaks it victim mentality yeah, yeah how, yeah, oh, how mate, he breaks it down yeah like yeah that. Yeah, that's the worst yeah. mentality some a person yeah. can have. Oh, I can't catch a break. Those it, Joe yeah. Rogan talks about it. Oh, I can't catch a break, guys. Yeah, if you like Joe Rogan, yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna <laughs> yeah. love this guy. That's what he man. says. He's like, just get yeah. it. Like, like, I'd like to think I got a good little circle, man. Like, I got a good few people around me. Like, I need to get more time with people like Sam Creasy. I used to train with him a lot. Haven't done it for a couple of years now, but I had. One point, I'd be regularly sparring with him, regularly sparring with Linus. I think that's the best boxer in Bedfordshire, two or three weights above me. And in the best MMA, the, I think he was number one in Europe at flyweight or something like that. He might even still be. Mm. So, you know, those two people regularly sparring with, it's just ridiculous. You surround yourself by better people. So how yeah. can you not get better? Yeah, it's, it's, it's impossible. Run, yeah, if you run a race with nine people that are slower than you, you're going to win but you ain't going to get a good time. If you run it with nine people that are faster than you, you're going to lose, but you're going to get a better time than the other of course, race. yeah. It's just, you're just catching up to these people like, Put yourself in like a, a big pond instead of a cool, small pond. Mate, yeah. that's, that's, you know it is, and that's for everything in life mm. as well. That's the funny thing. It, really is, it, it applies yeah. to everything. Yeah, man. it does. Um, but this is a question we ask everyone on the mm. pod. This is this the question of the pod. Your most euphoric moment in life so far. So the peak of the mountain for you so far wow. in life. So I heard Linus gave two. So I, I, I was thinking about it. So I want to give two. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. Uh, so the first one would probably be... I got uh, put into it. So there's this thing called the IMAFs, like the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. And it's a big, it's basically like uh, the Olympics of MMA, amateur MMA. And I remember I was going to, so the UK MMAF team, I was going to apply for them. Picked up a couple of injuries and I thought, yeah, yeah, stuff it. I won't do that sort of thing because I ain't going to get in. Ended up fighting Che Ville, the Che Ville fight on two weeks notice. So unfit, unprepared for that, two weeks notice in his hometown. Ended up beating him over five rounds. And then a couple of days later, I was walking through town. I got a message on my Instagram from this guy called Windy Miller. Didn't think much of it. Clicked on his Instagram and I was like, fucking hell, he's the chairman of the UK MMAF. And he was like, why aren't you in the UK team for the IMAFs? And I thought, I, sp- I don't know, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Childs. I was like, Mr. Childs. And he put, um, DM me your number. So I DM'd my number, called my bird straight away. I was like, yeah, fuck, you wouldn't believe it. And she's like buzzing for me and that. And then he ends up calling me saying, we like the fact that you strike from a distance, you don't take too much damage. He goes, all you've got to do is turn up to the training, register your name sort of thing. And then you're in the team. I want you in the team as one of the guys going. I think Mohamed Mukhaev was the other one. He's once you do a bit of research on him, you'll see he he wins all the IMAFs, all of that. He always he wins all of them. Everyone he's been in. But I thought I'm gonna go over to Bahrain, represent the UK MMA team, and that. And I thought it's fucking nuts. All I gotta do turn up to the trials and sign my name. And this is the best. It's also bittersweet. It's also a bittersweet one because the trials are April the 14th, the first one in Manchester. So I was supposed to go over fight Jack Eglin on the 13th. Go back to South End, stay at my girlfriend's house, and then go over to Manchester. So it was like, regardless of how that fight went, it would have been rough. You know, it would have been two hours of sleep, travel, stop for a bit, travel, two hours of training, sign my name up, blah, 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 and come back. 
And then through sheer embarrassment, I just said to him, I think I'm concussed. I didn't, I didn't go to those ones. I was fine. I was absolutely fine. But through sheer embarrassment of, fuck, he was at that fight. He's, he would have seen that fight. They might not want me in the trial sort of thing. I ducked that one. And then the next one was like November the 13th. I thought, all i got to do is just turn up to these things, sign my name. Two weeks before that, I was playing football with Linus. Fuck, half 12 kickoff. And the guy picks me up about quarter past 12, I think it was. Rocked up, quickly, shin pads on, boots on. Started running, and then within about 20 minutes, bang, tore my hamstring. Yeah. So then to sit there and read about all of these guys going to the IMAFs and that. So it was incredible for me at that moment to be told, like, you're in the team sort of thing, and then for that to happen. So bittersweet in that point, but a phenomenal moment for me at that. Yeah, right at the time. Then. And then the <laughs> other one is, uh, bad, I won Bad Arena Fighter of the Year. I think it was 18, 19, one of those ones. Um, but I was in a group chat with, I had gone from being zero and three in one year, losing three fights out of three fights to saying to my coach, I'm going to win five fights next year and pick up two titles. And he was like, right, cool. Yeah, let, we'll see. Never won a title in my life. I hadn't won a fight in over a year and a half. I ended up going, I think I was four and two that year. Arguably could have been five and one. I fought a guy uh, three weeks after tearing a hamstring. I'm a bit bitter at that one. It could have been five and one. Mm. And then, um, yeah, the next year we, they released, they were going to do a fight of the year thing. And I thought, oh, sick. Like, be nice to get mentioned in that sort of thing. And then my name was mentioned, which was a buzz. And then, it was everyone's got a vote for their guy who they want to win. It would be the judges, the commentators, the fans, the referees and the people that run the show. And I thought it'd be nice to just get a couple of votes come second or third or something like that. And then we're in a group chat all talking and that. And then, yeah, the fucking just before one of my fights, they released that. I won that. So I was a battery in a fight of the year one year. That's and quality, there's some man. savages in that show. Yeah. Man. Some like people have gone on to that show for like Bellator. I don't think anyone's gone to the UFC yet, but there's a few guys have gone on to Bellator. I think Leon Edwards might have fought on it. His brother definitely did. Brother's a bit of a savage as well, Fabian, apparently. Yeah, Fabian yeah. definitely fought on it. I don't know if Leon did. So people may have gone from there to Bellator UFC. So I won fight a year that year, which is phenomenal, man. I had six fights, I think. And that's how cutthroat it is at Prime MMA. Yeah? I won Battle Arena fight of the year. And at the Prime MMA end of the year show, I didn't even win fight of the year for Prime. <laughs> cutthroat. <laughs> cutthroat actually, man. Salty. Yeah, Salty yeah. ones. I've held on to that for a couple of years, mate. I've never won one award at the Prime end of the year shows. Is, is the Prime gym a really good gym then? Yeah. It's, it's all right, man. We've got a lot of guys coming through. Most of the guys are all young, up and coming guys. Yeah. But you've got like me and Ebro, the two guys that fight from there. We've had a couple of guys come and go through other reasons, this, that, and the other, but... Yeah, winning Bad Arena Fight of the Year and getting into the UK MMAF team. That was that's yeah, wicked, man. My two best moments so far. Um, normally, this is normally like the end of thing, but we were um, asked Spokes this question, but I want to do some other fun bits with you yeah, after. Yeah, of course, that's yeah, all right. Yeah. Anything, anything for the boy? Uh, nah, just um, you know, like on social media and stuff like that. See all these this hype about that Paddy Pimblet. Yeah. What's your personal opinion on that? <sighs> Do you, do you think like there's all this talk about him being the next Conor McGregor? No, no chance. Do you not think? No, no, no. He's you want all the English. Well, I would say you want all the English guys to do well, but I want the guys that I like to do well. And yeah. he's been rocked in both of his fights. Uh, he's been rocked in both of his fights, and then he's resorted to grappling, which he's very good at. But who does he beat in the top ten? Does he beat any of the current top ten? I think he gets smoked by anyone in that top ten. It'd be nice to see him do well, but mm. this. Listen, I'm telling you, quote me on this. Within a year. If he fights at least two more times within a year, that whole Scousers don't get knocked out will be just before a video of him getting knocked out. I'm telling you. It'll be a meme. I won't make it. Am I clipping this? I might have to clip this up. <laughs> I'm going to clip the boy up. Someone, he said, quote me. I'm clipping someone, this up. Someone, I always see him on my YouTube, yeah. man. He's, he's, he's very burgers, popular. He's very uh, popular. Like yeah, yeah, and that ain't going to last. No, you he, can't do he, that, He man. just munches off burgers yeah, and shit. Ricky and I'm Hatton. like... Ricky Hatton did that to his body. It's going to kill you, man, that stuff. You can't do it. But that guy he calls hand sanitizer. Ilya Tuporia, he, yeah. he would flatline. Is he a savage? They won't, they will not, they've got a lot of beef. What a perfect fight that'd be for both of them. That fight won't happen. They won't do it next. That fight will not nah, happen. Because even he's coming out He'll saying, nah, him. I'm not going to give him the time of day. Yeah, I'm yeah, do Because he knows he's going to go way The UFC him. won't give him that fight either. He's no, too, no, he's, he's silly, blowing yeah. up too quick. Yeah, yeah. He's a Is featherweight, he... I think. Look, he stepped up to lightweight, and Paddy Pimblett's a featherweight that stepped up to lightweight as well. They could both fight each other at featherweight. He gets on views on YouTube as well. Barstool have just signed him as well. So Barstool, Barstool, Barstool Sports, yeah, they do um, a lot of stuff in America and yeah. shit like that. Well, they've just it, signed him. It'd be him. silly not to jump on it, wouldn't you, really? Because what they'll do is they'll give him five or six more fights that he's going to smoke the guy in. They'll give him a guy that can't strike that's a grappler and he'll knock him out and he'll make him look even better. Yeah. Because they don't want him to keep getting submission wins. I know he knocked out the other guy, but he was dropped in that fight, I think. He got dropped. He got clipped by this guy. And who is this guy? He, like, the guy might be good, but do you? what was the guy he fought the other day? What was his name? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm not nah, well, I don't even know, and I, I actually like the know. UFC. Yeah, I like MMA, and I don't know. Yeah, do you know, like, 
I, I mean, he, you thought he's ruining any future interviews. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah, out here just yeah, slating yeah, my yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's gonna come to the door and <laughs> piece me up. Like, yeah. But no, that's my honest thoughts. I just no. I, I actually think I agree with you. To be I fair, I don't think you'll be. Champ, I think I agree yeah. with you because. And like you got people in his division like Calvin Qatar, oh, Brian Ortega, yeah, um, yeah, Max Holloway, Volkanovski. No, he's a lightweight. He's a uh, lightweight. He's gone he's, up. I, he is a featherweight, but like you said about the food, he he's now a lightweight. I think yeah. those last two fights were a lightweight. Charles Oliveira, put him up against Conor McGregor right now. Gaethje. Gaethje. Oh my oh, god. Oh Gaethje. Hey. You know what? I well, love that. To be fair though, when oh, he yeah, when what's he what's going to do to him? When he come into the UFC, Gaethje, he was kind of the same. Yeah, he was all over the place. And the then he's now was... he's fixed his striking up and he's looking what like he did some. To Tony Ferguson ab- was. Unreal. But he's deadly, That made me man. question whether I wanted to do this. Yeah. Man. When you could hear those punches and you could hear bones rattling in his face, you thought... He's, like, a, he's remember, a savage, man. I watched that with my girlfriend and her family and her mum looked at me and went, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, well, I don't want to get that done today. I was like, I want to be the one doing that. Yeah, like, yeah. But yeah, I don't... Every, <laughs> every fight of him is like... Yeah, it's a war. It's a war. Like, yeah. he brings... Fight of the night. Every yeah, fight of him brings the highlights. Man. Fight of the night, yeah, man. But do you know what it was in the Tony Ferguson one for me? It was that last punch and he went, there's something went in his brain and he started like shaking his head. He started doing that yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, this this guy's fucked. I badly. Think it was, um, I think there was something loose in his head. Look, he, he could feel. Yeah. Which is how horrifying is that when you think about it? Like something loose in, you're going to. And you've got him. a killer just mm. coming for you. Yeah. Man. He ain't stopping. It's a good stoppage. A very good yeah, stoppage, to be fair. I don't know what Ferguson. It would have been interesting to see what Ferguson done because I've never seen him quit. So it would have been interesting to see if he stayed, uh, whether he stayed on his feet, went to his back. Because I don't think he would have sat on the floor and tapped. I I would have loved, obviously for his like the safety, they had to stop it. But I would have loved to have seen how he reacted after that. Something loose in his head. And he took a back, the first time I've seen him take a backward step. When have you ever seen that? Never. The guy's this, not, something not right of him. Like, well, he's fighting Chandler now. He's That's, good for He beats well, Chandler. I think he does. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about Chandler, man. I don't think Chandler can beat these top guys. No, I don't think he's at that level, is he? But I do he's, really like him and I think he's a really yeah. good fighter. I just don't think he's, he can he's beat... He's a bodybuilder, isn't he? He's, he's, he's just, as McGregor said about Mendes, he's an overblown bantamweight. But Chandler's probably an overblown featherweight, isn't he? Yeah, Realistically. he's big, man. Yeah. I think he could possibly go oh. down and maybe do something. I wouldn't want to see him cut that weight, man. I mean, they say you can cut more weight with more muscle, like the water load. Because him and Volkanovski like. would be a good fight, especially for the wrestling inside oh, of it. I think he flatlines Volkanovski. You... I think he goes through him. Do you? Yeah, I think he goes through him. Are you not rating him. Volk? No, I do, but they're the same guy, but Charles yeah. just got twice the power. Yeah, I think yeah. He flatlines him, yeah. I don't yeah. know why you don't think of that, man. If he can yeah. cut it, go yeah. go yeah. down and and because maybe what, try he's something. 32, 30, he might be thirty four. Like it's, there's only a certain amount you can cut. Yeah. Do you know what I mean that's why that's why I'm confident I can always stay at bantamweight because I'm twenty nine. Suppose you have health issues in that. Yeah, well, like, long term health effects age, like you fuck up your liver, like kid gallstones or kidney stones or whatever. This it's not good for you doing all that sort of stuff, but. That's why I'm trying to float around the one fifty mark, so I only have to cut fifteen. Yeah. As opposed to last time, I started at one six three mark and cut twenty six. For a guy that was, I wasn't even that fat, you know, I was just like Nate Diaz skinny fat, I called it. Yeah. Like Nathan and Craig say, when I'm in fight shape, I'm uptown dunk and out of shape, I'm downtown chunk. <laughs> downtown chunk, out of shape, which they ridiculed me for. I got called muffin top for my coach, downtown chunk at the gym. I was like, there's nowhere I could go where I was safe. Like everywhere was just a really cool yeah, Everyone getting on to you. You know, when you said you'd done your hamstring and yeah. you were going to sign up to, what was it called? Uh, I- the I- IMAFs. Yeah. So have you still got a chance to do that? You have to be amateur. Oh, because um, oh, you're now. going yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. I'm part, like, I thought about doing last year's one, I think. But then I was ready in my head to do the professional fights. It just didn't happen. And then this yeah. year, I'm, I, I do not want another. I had the choice of fighting again in March as an amateur. And then again in May as an amateur. And I thought, I just need to get a date and like sign a contract or something can have my pro fight. Because it's, it it's just going Nick on and on yeah, and on. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, I wanted to go pro at 27. And then, so it's both hamstrings I've done now. So it was tore my right one I tore when I was 26 kept me out for a little bit and then tore my left one two years ago I think just before lockdown so I couldn't even go to the gym and rehab it properly you know it was yeah just sitting at home trying to rehab a, a hamstring that is dead yeah. or worse man. Yeah, both of them gone one. yeah like my mate Jack calls them quavers or Danny Welbeck quaver hamstrings <laughs> he always calls them quavers which is yeah yeah ridicule but I mean can't like playing football as well is another thing now I love playing football but I just don't do it anymore because I know something just will happen just in case you get injured yeah, yeah. Something will, I'll go and go I don't mind going and go but can't can't play football yeah, yeah. Uh, just just a few little fun things I want to yeah, do because yeah, cool. obviously MMA and stuff like that your top five like your your pound for pound top five MMA Ooh. greats Oh, great. Oh. Yeah, it could be any... They don't even have to be the pound for pound best fighters in the world because yeah. it's hard. It's a hard... Me, uh, he calls me a new school fan, so I'm going to just straight up disrespect all of the older ones. 
my top five. Ooh. It's very hard to look past Khabib. It's very hard to look past Khabib. At one. Like, yeah. It's, my heart's telling me just say McGregor or Poirier, but I don't want to be stupid. So you'd have to go Khabib. He's number one, probably. Um, and then it's... I, I, I like to discriminate against the guys that cheat. And I would say John Jones. Actually, fuck it. I'll put him in the ones that have been caught as well. I'd go Khabib number one. Dirty Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty Bones, man. Because they're probably all on it, you know? Just, I can't on, keep them out just because they're the ones that have been caught, you know? They ain't got the best doctors to hide it. Um, John Jones number two, probably. I'm a huge fan of this guy, and I know he got done for something bad, but I put TJ Dillashaw at number three. Killer sure. When I met him, man, I just couldn't believe it. I just He was the champ. He was the best in the world at my weight at the time. I was just thinking... Short of shit, but he, he's like he was like this thick man. The guy was huge. Yeah, I will. I'll ask you after. We'll, we'll yeah. Keep going. Um, so, <laughs> Khabib Jones, TJ. Um, I know he's not done much, but from the fights he had, he was phenomenal. So I go Henry Cejudo four. This is a new school one. I, I don't have enough knowledge on the old school, but I think number five. Who's dominated divisions? Maybe you have to put Aldo in there. He was Aldo. phenomenal, yeah. He was when he was at his best, he was phenomenal. So what we got? Khabib at Khabib, one. Jones, Two. TJ, Cejudo, and then maybe Aldo. So heavy favourites on the smaller guys. But it's hard to look past Khabib. Yeah, isn't it? It is. Everyone right. says yeah. he's got a lot of fights that are in Russia that aren't three round fights. So it's all two round fights which shouldn't be counted. But how do you that's basically in my eyes, that's the same as McGregor uh, may have gone fifty and oh. In MMA, having an undefeated record is, is near impossible. It's harder. How often do you just get yeah. clipped? Just get clipped or just get caught in a submission. Like, and for him to do it 29 fights in a row without getting caught is just is insane. So, yeah. Just uh, Dillashaw. Yeah. How good is he? Because like, apparently he trains like he fights. I couldn't stop watching the guy. It was... I remember coming back and feeling like... I, I was like a lanky bantamweight trying to move around. I based a lot of my game trying to move around like him. All I would do is I would just halfway through like drilling or sparring I'd just be staring at this dude because I'm like and he was as much as everyone said he was a piece of shit this that and the other like I couldn't help myself I was like can I get a photo please mate I couldn't help myself I had to get a photo like, I might not ever meet this guy again so yeah. and he's like yeah of course man he was signing loads he was always busy signing stuff but when he sparred with um, my friend Eli at the time um, I remember looking at Eli we had just done some rounds and he was fine turned around again he's padding himself up he's putting his head <laughs> gear on and I thought oh, who are you fight? Who are you sparring and he's like oh TJ I thought I have to watch this he finished around on the floor bleeding. Like Fucking he's notorious hell. for like sparring, like he's fighting. Yeah, he which goes is, hard. Everyone knows it, so it's your choice whether you want to do it. And I'm ashamed to say at the time I just I sort of ducked from doing around with him. I wish I had just to get a feel of it, but just it's like battered. you have Hold to it. jump it because he's training to defend a world title. Yeah. So if you're going with him, you have to be prepared to get to fucked be, up. Yeah, he's fighting the best in the world. Yeah, every, he's got to fight the best in the world every week to to maintain being the best in the world. Is there any noticeable names from the gym that you did spar with? Uh, I think I did rounds with Tyler Diamond. He went on the Armour Fighter. Yeah. Um, who else did I go with? Eli I went with. He um, he had a stint in the UFC. He's Anthony and Sergio Pettis' cousin. Okay, Eli, yeah. I did rounds with him. He was just... You could tell he was a Pettis by the shots he was throwing. Yeah. Like, they were just creative. Um, I don't think I did rounds with Vinny in the end, but probably Eli is probably the best. The first sparring I did there, I remember... Um, Matey boy come out and I remember him looking like Michael B. Jordan, just absolutely jacked. And I was thinking, right, what is this guy going to be? And he started boxing me. I thought, boxer, cool. Then he threw a push kick to my stomach. And I remember just, he must have been 70 kilo fighter, maybe 77 in and around. And I ran straight to the toilet and I was hunched over the toilet, like gagging, about to vomit. I thought, I don't fucking belong here, man. <laughs> I was like, I don't. Be-. And then I just sort of said to myself, just suck it up, you little bitch. And I went out, <laughs> went out there and then I ended up doing another round with him and then I finished the sparring and then. That was, that was another good thing that happened for me when I was over there. Yeah. Because I thought, this is day one. Like, well, day two, technically. I thought, this is day two. Day one in the gym. And I don't belong here. I thought, what the fuck am I going to do? Can and you that'll create people. Yeah, it will. Man. Yeah, it will. You just man. get through it, man. You, yeah. just, you just Imagine that 24-7. Seven days yeah. a week. Oh, yeah. I came back just... and, man, I was I was on another level. It was it was like my dream. Just getting up at like eight or whatever. Getting to the gym for half eight. Nine till, I think it was, what, 11? Something like that. Two, two and a half hours of training. Get home. Chill. Eat. Sleep. Go back for half two till four o'clock train and then you've done all your training by 4 p.m and then you're just in california just chilling just, chilling, just doing whatever you want like, i'd yeah. go down run down the road like i said we went to cinema <laughs> went to that party and he knocked on the door and he was like um cody garbrand answered and i thought fucking hell i was like this is cody garbrand i thought what am i doing at a party with him and then there's a few other things that happen like, i can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I thought that boy was yeah. gonna release yeah, some yeah, shit yeah. Like, like, i thought i thought the yeah. pod was about to blow yeah, the fuck like, up like, <laughs> Right, but, um, story just, time bro. yeah it was, it was cool Shit. man just, I couldn't believe it being like just chilling there and then 
Yeah, we went to a club and I remember there was like Danny Castillo was there, Andre Fili, all of these UFC Fucking boys. Fucking hell, man. And then there was, I went to the bar and as soon as I started speaking, all the American birds come around because they hear your English. And then all the UFC guys come around thinking, I did not think this was my way in with the UFC yeah. guys just being English. But it was... That's it was why they call him, man. that's why they call him Uptown Dunk. Uptown Dunk. <laughs> 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 no, but... Uh, another one I want to do with you is we're, we're going to do some fight predictions yeah, for, the, for the card this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't actually know this this geezer at the bottom. Vince, I don't even know his name. <laughs> Been I've got no idea. Do you that don't, we'll miss that one no. out. Mackenzie Dern, Tisha Torres. Oh, that's not bad. Tisha Torres, I think she was the champ at one point. Mackenzie Dern's jiu-jitsu She's the jiu-jitsu belt. one, yeah. She yeah. is the... She's a mum now as well, isn't she? Still she, killing it. She is the favourite. I don't have a mum like that. I've got to go Mackenzie Dern. i got to go. Mackenzie, Mackenzie Dern. Dern by submission, yeah. I'm, put, I'm putting a bet on whatever he says. <laughs> Mackenzie. I'm going... No, submi- if she's going to win, she's probably going to win yeah, by right. submission. She, yeah, she ain't going to She ain't gonna knock her out. She's going to... Don't quote me on that one, though. She, <laughs> she, she, she'll sub her. If she beats her, she subs her. She's a jiu-jitsu black belt. She's very high level. Right, and then we got Gilbert Burns, Hamza. Oh, I hate this one. Gilbert Burns is was my pick to be the next champion. I thought he was going to smoke Usman because his strike his his striking was incredible and his jiu-jitsu was nobody went to the ground with him because his jiu-jitsu was that good. But I just I can't help but get on the hype train. I think Hamza is going to smoke him. Yeah. I think he's going to smoke him. Round 1. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Would, I would go Hamza. Yeah. Usman striking to be underrated. To win. Go Hamza to win. Yeah. Don't go finish because Gilbert Burns let's put some respect on his name. I'd go Hamza to win. <laughs> just sprinkle a little bit. Yeah, just yeah, after the yeah. He's going to get absolutely dominated, but he might not get yeah. finished. He might not get finished. Have some respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aljo versus Peter Yan. That's Peter Yan. Peter Yan's going to batter him. Yeah, yeah. Again, he is. He, yeah. I mean, Al Jermaine's a bitch. I don't I would, like Al Jermaine Stone. He's a dick. When he left the belt on a four, I thought, well done. That's the best thing you've done. Yeah. Then when he started going out with the nights out with it, I swear to God, In if it. that's me, I'm leaving that belt. I'm not touching it. I'm just saying the belt is vacated. <laughs> Nobody is, has it. What are you he went out. Or not? He went out. Yeah. <laughs> no, basically what happened is for people watching, they might know what happened. Um, he got a illegal knee yeah, by Pete yeah. Yan. It was a dirty knee, to be yeah, fair. It was a doing. bad, yeah. bad knee. And he said he couldn't continue the fight, concussion, whatever. Fair enough. Then they gave him the belt. Then he threw the belt on the floor and said, no, I'm not the champion. We have to fight again because it wasn't effect. Because he was getting battered anyway. Yeah, he, he was, was getting, getting fucked around. up, man. He was getting tripped for fun. Like, He's a grappler and he was getting tripped over for fun. And he, Peter Yan was mocking him, I think. I think he was deliberately mocking him. And then for me, I liked, again, like I said, with the money, it's different. If I'm in that situation, I might have raised it above my head. Yeah. But, but I, if you do that from the get go, yeah. it's all right. He chucked it on the floor, like, yeah. no respect. Yeah. And then I haven't at a party yeah. later with the fucking belt in his hand. So, yeah, yeah. It's oh. Peter Yan you've gone for. Peter second Yan. round. Peter Yan stops him. Stops him. Third, yeah. And then. The main card, the main fight, Volkanovski. So it's actually a good guy. Yeah. He's oh, Korean yeah. zombie. Yeah, I, I don't know why sense. Korean zombie, he's fighting Korean zombie. I saw something on uh, TikTok, funny enough, the other day. It was like, they've got a big problem at the moment where instead of the champions being so good, the top two are very good in every division. Every Because div- Holloway smokes everyone else, but he just hasn't had enough to beat Volk. So Volkanovski's like fighting the guys that Holloway hasn't yet fought. Because it's, how do you give third place the title fight when second place has just smoked him? You yeah, know? So it's, yeah. They're just giving him guys to fight to sort of build up more hype, let Holloway beat someone else, and then eventually they're going to do the trilogy. What else are they going to do? If they put them back together again, one of them edges the other one, and then they're going for And it's like, such a tight fight. Yeah, because they beat everyone else so easily. Every other division is, is the top two, and then they beat everyone else so easily. It's like, uh, I think Poirier beats everyone else in that division, but I don't think he... He probably will beat Oliver if they fight again, but he didn't the first time, did he? Yeah, you know? so yeah. he nearly people. fucking done him in the first round, though, yeah. man. He, he wobbled him. I was so confident he was going to win that fight. I just, I can't believe Oliver has got like a bit of mustard about him. He just gets through them, doesn't he? People think uh, McGregor's got a good chance with Oliver, just yeah, just the sheer he's, striking, he's, especially he's in the first round, because he does get caught. Yeah. Chandler caught him in the first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poirier caught him in the first McGregor's, round. He just done enough to survive. Uh, Colby wanted to fight Poirier, didn't he? Uh, yeah, that's um, yeah, yeah. That's they used to all train together, didn't they? That's um. Because he knows it probably won't happen. Uh, Poirier hinted at going up and he thought, one easy fight for me. I'm not quite, I don't think he'd beat Usman. But he's like, what another money fight for me? Get as many money fights as you can before you go. That makes sense. He's taken zero damage. I don't think he beats Colby. You don't think he beats Colby? Nah. No, I meant the other way around. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, He's taken no damage as in. All he's done is broke his jaw. I know it sounds stupid, but that's all he's done. I don't think he's taken too many shots to the head. I think he's good. I think he's golden upstairs. 
And have you heard him speak like unpublic, but um, not on an interview even? Yeah, I he's did. He's a the other really day. nice guy. Yeah, he so is. He's, no, he is. It's like he like he puts on he puts the front on the persona game, because yeah. uh, it's a bit crazy. You got to play the game. The thing though, what yeah, kept little, him in the yeah. UFC. What was yeah the story yeah, that yeah. um they said to him we're gonna cut you because yeah. your style well, or something. All the Brazilians filthy animals. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck in Brazil. <laughs> you ain't getting home. That's mental. That's savage. Yeah, literally in an arena full of Brazilians calling them filthy animals. I thought, wow. I was like, that's... Obviously, we watched a pod, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, the, the full day. send yeah, pod funny. with him. Yeah, with him on. he appears to be such a good guy, but then when you hear him talk, you just can't help but hate him. Yeah, yeah he's but just, uh, yeah. You're, obviously you're a fighter. What do you think about the Masvidal thing? Well, he jumped him. Yeah. Oh, I think that's so embarrassing. Like, yeah. I mean, I know he's like, I'm a gangster and this is what we do. Like, gangsters, we, we keep our energy and that, but it's... You and five mates. If you watch the fight again at the end, when he goes for him, his coach is like, you've just had 25 minutes yeah. to do legally whatever you want. And you couldn't. Why are you now doing it with five or six mates? It's, I find it, Colby's laughing to the bank because it's like, he's claiming like nine or 10 grand damage to his watch. Like he's going to have to get his teeth all paid for by Masvidal. It's, and he's going to sue him for... Well, he broke up his teeth. He apparently lost two teeth. Yeah, something like two teeth. Like, you won't see it because he won't smile in any photos, obviously. But um, supposedly two teeth, his watch was damaged. Like 90 grand Rolex was damaged. Milking it. Yeah, I I'd would be. Milk, yeah. I would turn up to the next thing with a brace on my yeah. neck. <laughs> I just. Like, but you've got to play with it. He probably yeah, will. Yeah, you've got to play yeah, with it. It's, it's, it's the game they're in, man. Colby's not lost at all because no way, even if it's five average guys, you're not going to beat. Like, a UFC no. fighter's not going to beat him up. Five guys are going to do a UFC fire. Even like, two people. Masvidal's that yeah. sucker punch him, yeah. Supposedly, for, even more. Not even like he went up to his face and said, you know who I like, reckon, recognition first. You know, it was from behind, apparently. Mm. Which is so embarrassing. I, yeah. I was a big fan of Masvidal's and he hit he hit the ceiling, didn't he, with um, the UFC cover. He was on the UFC cover, knockout of the year, fight of the year. And he just, from that to this, it's just so embarrassing, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I, I don't like that stuff. No. Nah. No, nah, I don't fight outside of the gym. That's, uh, every, if someone wants to fight me, I'll, I'll say to him, I've got the keys to the gym. Like, let's at least go put some mouth guards in so yeah, none of yeah. us lose teeth. He did there. say he's the yeah. king of the sucker punch. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah, he has. <laughs> I, <laughs> the man he's has, though. He, he yeah. literally said in his yeah. city, man, the best thing you can do is sucker punch someone and do a 40 yard dash because yeah, he goes, yeah, you don't know yeah. if they're going to pull out a gun. But yeah. Well, he knows Colby's not going to pull out a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Colby, <laughs> gun. Colby, <laughs> Colby just pulled out a strap just and just started fucking lighting it up. Piece of Nah, it is. It's just. The, he knows the game you're in, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, do you not? Salty, do, but then, yeah, do you yeah. not think, on the other hand, with Colby, you should you shouldn't maybe say as much stuff the to kids. him because you know yeah, if yeah. he does see you out, this potentially yeah, could happen. Yeah. Well, I, I would always try and avoid kids, like partners and family. Family, I would say, is off the table unless they go to my family first. You know, I would try and insult their fighting ability or like what happened in their last fight. I'd be like, you can't. I'm going to beat you because you've got shit boxing or something. I try yeah. and attack. What they know is a weakness. But it's like, like you said, mate, you, you're trying to hurt someone's feelings. You are yeah. trying to hurt someone's feelings. Hurt them, so things yeah. things are off the table, but in the sense of <laughs> they said to if you get punched up, then after, because the geezer's still salty, you've just beat him and he's yeah, a bit yeah, salty yeah. then. That's what I'm not like. I don't think it, it's bad, but it's not bad because you sort you sort of know what the guy is I think is it's like, bad, but it's not. Do you know why I don't think it's like, it's not, it's not as bad as it, well, it's bad, but I don't think it's as bad as it is. It's because yeah. even all the commentators, when they talk about Masvidal, Joe Rogan, everyone, they're all like, this guy is a thug. Like he's he will come for you on yeah, the street. Yeah. So now he's come for someone on the street. Everyone's turned around like, oh, no, oh this is so no. bad. What yeah. he's done. <laughs> this guy's he been living this. He did it. say yeah. this. He yeah. warned you. You were. He's a real one. So it's just, you got, you can't contain everyone. As a kid, I reckon. How are you guys? You, I'm 22. He's 25. 25. Oh, so probably two. Yeah, I remember. I was probably. It must have been younger than 13 or so. Watching the old backyard fights. Do you remember them or Kimbo Slice? Yeah. Kimbo Slice. I probably yeah. watched Masvidal fight without knowing who he was back then. Yeah. You, know? you, you might have done the same. Like watch. I watched Bear Kimbo Slice and not knowing it's Jorge Masvidal fighting. Like the guy getting down and dirty. For, he, he, yeah. He is <laughs> yeah, he is. Them bare knuckle boxing on YouTube. There's some of them are nuts, man. Yeah. yeah they get I, down I, with you. You'll never catch me in that stuff, man. Never. Nah. Like. Brad Pickett just went and done one, didn't he? And I thought, you'll never, ever catch me doing that stuff. It's yeah. mental. Like, fuck that. Paulie Malinaji just fought um, Artem Lobov a couple, well, a couple yeah, of years ago. Yeah, yeah, I see he, that fight. Yeah. He broke both his hands in like the first couple of rounds and he couldn't punch. So Artem beat him. I thought you've just been beat by Artem Lobov. Yeah, Artem him, Lobov like, is, yeah, is not a good thing. It, really. Yeah. I do like Artem, though, to be fair, but yeah, he's, he's just... Connor's little Russian man. Who's yeah. that little guy with McGregor he's... in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connor's yeah, little yeah. Russian <laughs> man, like a bit of slap. When it, yeah, they, they he stuck it on him, and the guy, his bum went, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he did shit to himself. He did, did, did never, Khabib never, was Khabib. slapping him. <laughs> yeah. But then that's, that's the same again. Khabib had, like, 10 mates around him, you know? Yeah. It's like, do I really want to get... Get fucked. And, and they're, like, they're like all MMA fighters, pretty much, inn
um, his cousins, his brothers, all of it, Khabib's family were there swinging for McGregor. I'm, I'm sure it shows you there, like how much the heat. Yeah, you, I, I watched a real, po- uh, podcast of Khabib. Wife, he? Like, I mean, and he fucked him up. Yeah, it's not yeah, even yeah. like he got beat by him. He fucked him up and he fucked him up. He fucked him up and then fucked him up again. That was. But that's how you know, like the guy, because he's not even like that. When you watch his interviews, he's actually. What do you reckon he said? Real man. His only business. You reckon he said that? You know that thing where it's he like... He did. I, I thought I heard yeah, him yeah. say it's only it's business. It's only business. Yeah. Oh, I'm very Which made man. him sound a Keep bit... your energy. You're getting smoked. Yeah, it made him sound a bit soft shield. out here, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, but that's what happens, though. Butter like, biscuit. Oh, yeah. You're a man on fatigue. another man. You're getting fucking bullied. You're yeah. like... Mm, it's only I always business. say fatigue <laughs> yeah. makes a coward out of everyone. Yeah. Fatigue will make anyone a coward, man. You'll have all this energy when you're exhausted. And as a pos- and he's shown against Diaz. When he's fatigued, he wants to get submitted more than knocked out. Yeah, yeah. He showed that. He shot. Why would you shoot him for Nate Diaz? Conor McGregor shooting on Nate Diaz. How stupid is that? He got of course he was gonna That's why I think well. he yeah, was wobbly. Yeah, yeah, he? Yeah, of course he was That's why I think yeah. now he just needs to just go enjoy your life, man. He's just tweeting. You've done enough. Yeah, yeah. You've done enough. Because all now, like, I just think he's just get, you're getting too much. Right? If, he had, a if dick. he had fought Poirier the second time and lost the way he did and then left at that with that humble McGregor donating the 500,000 pounds, his legacy is like rebuilt. Forgetting the Khabib thing, forgetting all of that. Everyone just sees him as this guy that's um, made up with Dustin Poirier. They've had this like arm on shoulder at the way ins like giving him the hot sauce, donating 500 grand to his charity. What a way to go. Perfect. And then he goes back on Twitter and starts sniffing cocaine and like, oh, I think your, it's wife, ego. your wife's in my... D- yeah, it's, you've lost, man. Yeah. You've been knocked out. It happens. Like, yeah, just, he's got a crazy... He just come out and said, man. you know what? I'm not the guy I used to be. I don't think I can get yeah, back yeah, to that yeah, point yeah. because of everything that's happened. Like, it's yeah. been a good run. Yeah. Everyone would have just respected it. Because yeah, yeah, he yeah. is... T- I, I was... When he fought Alvarez, man, that was... Like, Joe Rogan always says it was like a guy from Mars against a guy from Earth. Yeah. It was like Eddie Alvarez had no idea what was happening to him. And he's not particularly a good striker, but he smoked a lot of those guys and he worked his way up to the belt. You know, he beat RDA. He was juicing on everything. Everything you could take, he was taking. Was he? Oh, he looked... When he fought Pettis, he was another animal. And then Eddie Alvarez went and, like, destroyed him. And then... Yeah, he just to go up and, and do that to him was... That was phenomenal. That was one of the best performances I've seen in MMA. That's why I wish well, Alvarez like, beat Gagey. He did, yeah. But then, like you said, that was early doors gauge. Yeah. Like, a bit a bit ropey. Like, Do you reckon if he would have just carried on fighting and then maybe had a fight with Khabib, it would have been a different story? I Instead of he, having that break. If he if he done it after the Eddie Alvarez yeah. fight, no Mayweather, no, none of when that you stuff. look at his frame, I just don't see him as a, a big lightweight. Like, Poirier, when you see his back and his shoulders and that, you're like, that's a big guy for lightweight sort of thing. Apparently, he walks at like 200 odd pounds. Do you know what I mean? McGregor. He's just trying to turn into a bodybuilder. It's all that muscle on a small frame. And that's maybe why his leg snaps. When he's coming down and turning and twisting with the power, it's, the bone structure might not be there to support that frame, you know? And if he had stayed at featherweight, he goes down as one of the best ever. If he stays at featherweight, what did he do? He beat Alder, then he moved up, didn't he? Is that what he did? Beat Alder, yeah, 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 moved straight up. And then it was beat, the RDA got yeah, yeah. called if off. He, and If he stays at featherweight, gives it a bit of time, beats Aldo again, then he fights Holloway again, beats Holloway again. And then goes on and wins one or more fight. He goes down as one of the best. He goes down as the best featherweight, without a doubt, ever. Beat Aldo twice. You go down as the best featherweight ever. And maybe one of the best fighters ever. And then maybe... He, but he saw Alvarez as a weak, lightweight champion. And yeah. he took that chance, didn't he? I mean... He done it. First yeah, two-weight yeah, world yeah. champion. Yeah, he yeah. reckons yeah. that he sits at this weight now. He reckons he wants seven. He's like, yeah, I'm but, uh, comfortable. Usman are you? eats him for breakfast. I don't want to see that fight. Like... I know Usman's punchable, but... Usman's striking's underrated. Look at the size of the guy's head and neck. Yeah, it's massive. How is McGregor... McGregor's going to hurt him and might wobble him. What does Colby call him? The king of EPO? Uh, CEO of EPO. <laughs> CEO of EPO. He's like those needle marks on your belly, bro. He's like... CEO of EPO. Yeah, and you know, I, I believe Colby when he says that stuff. Like, who is it that was saying... Um, well, Cody come out and said, oh, TJ's juicing and that. I see him in the change rooms. He's juicing, he's juicing. And then a year or so later, it comes out, look, TJ is juicing. And it's like... Colby, Cody said something, didn't he? What did he say? He said, uh, like a slip of the tongue. It was like, yeah, yeah, when we're in the back and we catch him doing it. It was something that like, implied that all of them were in there doing it, you yeah. know? And it's like, you might have just fucked up your whole gym, you idiot, man. But It's mad as well, because Colby shared a room with uh, John Jones, yeah, didn't it? When they were all training. Dresses, and they, think, him yeah. and Usman always dodge each other from wrestling. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I think, um, and it goes back, and I think it? It goes fighters back, know yeah. if other fighters are on juice because of gym yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, they all, gonna, they all talk to each other. you get hold of someone, man, you know someone's taking something by the way they feel like there's a couple of guys I thought I'd probably say two like when they've grabbed hold of me or they've done something I've gone this isn't right this isn't what a 61 kilo guy should feel like or a 66 guy you know there's certain guys they grab hold of you and think this isn't right is there just some freaks though there might be you, you might have some freaks like some guys that just because them Nigerians are quite yeah, specimens yeah like thick and Ghana, sh- like yeah. 
Well, what's either the way, though, you're getting it. Like, it's hey, the boy Linus, the boy Linus, yeah. he ain't no small cat, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. Hey, he yeah. walked up in there and I was like, this yeah. is your room now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're the captain now. <laughs> oh, and the worst thing about that piece of shit as well is he'll come down the gym and he'll be like, I was spying to them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sound. So I start putting on my boxing gloves. He's like, oh, no, MMA. Thinking, oh, hopefully there's no one that turns up to the gym because he's got such a good jab to the body. Look, he turns it into just a single leg pick and he'll pull out my leg and I'm on the floor and everyone's like, did Linus just take Duncan down? <laughs> and he's in, in mouth just fucking punching me and I can sub him, but it takes a while because he's so strong. He's so, when I shoot in on him, the first time we He's grappled, just an athletic beast. Yeah, he man. gave it a big one. He was like, oh, I could sub you. I was like, no, no, no. And then me, him and Jack were just floating around. And eventually we all went to the gym. I can't remember, what, maybe two o'clock in the morning because he was giving it the big one. And then I shot him for a takedown and he sprawled, I thought. Fuck. I was like, I didn't know he knew what a sprawl was. And then we grappled him. We grappled for about 20 straight minutes. I think I eventually guillotined him. But fuck, he's strong. He's explosive. And he's got the hands. So he's he's could, not like, yeah. He could easily get into MMA when he's done, man. I keep saying to him, that once you've done what you need to do in boxing, 34, 35, whatever, have one MMA fight. He said he likes jiu-jitsu yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, he's all right. He knows what he's doing. I've done a couple of things with him where he's escaped. I'm like, how did you know that? And he's like, oh, I did a bit when I was younger. He's pretty savage. I think that. he's just a freak athlete. I think yeah. like really good at touches, football, he saw, yeah, really like, good at oh. boxing. Re- okay, football. Ah, uh, uh, okay. don't, hey, <laughs> Linus, hey. Podcast, he said really good at football. <laughs> I thought he's I've athlete. heard a few people tell me he's a bit of a baller, yeah, man. He's all right, man. They're probably not very good themselves. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's all right. Uptown Dunk got these feet. Yeah, <laughs> no, I used to. Not anymore, man. <laughs> I ain't got the hamstrings. I ain't got the hamstrings. We played, we played yeah. together a few times. Before, yeah. So yeah, he's all right. <laughs> very good. Very he's good. Minimal. <laughs> minimal. Oh, he's okay. He's solid, I'd say. Six and a half seven. No. <laughs> be happy with that as well. You know what's funny? Yeah. Um, I was gonna get him on today. Yeah, yeah. And have him as the co-host. He'll come and give me some smoke. But yeah, he yeah. was uh, he he's going Peterborough and that. But what I'm gonna do now because we haven't got the uh, other guy doing it with me. We have got the space now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have two guests. Have me and have you and him. Yes. Yeah, and we'll just we'll just result one in off. a fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Stop fighting. Without a doubt, we'll be hey, I'll be like, listen, news. I'll move yeah, the yeah. table. But I'm gonna sit this but one he's, out. He's, he's a beast, man. Like. In the middle of my camp, he'll come down and go, let's just get 10 rounds in. And he'll come down and do 10 rounds MMA spot on me, just in my camp. Like, like it's nothing for him sort of thing. But obviously, we, like, I don't boot him in the legs when yeah, he's in yeah. camp. Like, nothing stupid. But he always says stuff like, oh, why? When, when he saw me spar his friend, he's like, you're actually really good. Why aren't you like this against me? I'm like, you're fucking about to be the British champion of boxing. Like, I can't get close to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I step into range and he pieces me you up. You know what? It's good to have a friend like that, man. Yeah, yeah. It's solid. Yeah. That is it's, solid. Yeah, you man. need these it people is. around you because... I look at him and like there obviously is a bit of jealousy. Not like that I don't want him to have what he's got. I also want to have that. You know, I want him to have it and I want us both to be at the top. So I think it's not like I'm um, saying I want it and I don't want him to have well, it. Well, I'm saying it's a bit of envy. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, yeah. En- envy more so yeah. than jealousy. Yeah. yeah, I I want it as well. You know, I- and having him around me, it's like if I had like a boxer that was floating around the southern area titles, I would be here sort of floating below him. The, the higher he goes, and the more I can be around him, the more I can box with him and train mm. with him. He, he's sort of like me. setting the bar. Yeah, and you're just yeah, like yeah, hungry. Exactly, yeah, yeah. The, the barrier makes me, and then I've got to do the same with an MMA guy. Like I need to get back in touch with people like Sam and his brother Tom. Just spar with those guys because they are savages, man. Yeah, absolutely. That's savages. what I, you know. That's what I was saying. Like when we were talking about Till, why it's so good for Till? Because yeah, like, you're going with. Go, I don't know yeah. why people like. Go with the people that are better than you. Yeah. Go, because go fight with these guys that yeah, are coming in. Yeah, you're coming to the zone. Then go train with... And I think these two have established early doors, hams at Smokes Till. I think they've established that. Like, So that's not on the table anymore. There's no training going, yeah, well, I reckon I could battery. And he's over there telling someone else something. But it's the same with Fury. Fury's reached out to Joshua and said, I'll train you for this fight. But Joshua's probably still thinking, I can beat this guy. There's no way he beats Fury. He needs to swallow that pride and train with someone that will help him and help him progress. But those two have that. They've got past that. Who would win in the fight? I think. I think it's very apparent. Cam- Hams that smokes him in it. I think he dogged it. I, yeah. And I, even when it comes I to the striking thing, when I was watching the thing, it was like even his coach was like, "Till's gonna be." It's, it's Muay Thai tomorrow. Till's gonna be fucking surprised about his striking. Yeah. And I think he pieced I him up. I haven't seen any footage of them sparring. Nothing. Go on. Um, have you been watching the Smash Bros. episodes? It's no, on I, Block Asset. You ain't. I'll, I'll send I, them I over to you. No, oh, I'm gonna show you. Yeah, oh man, you're gonna. Oh, you're gonna love it, man. Yeah. he's just like the one the other night in it. Oh, he has woke up at twelve o'clock in the night because he's he's restless. He can't sleep. Hamza. Yeah. and he's done four sessions already he wakes up at 12 and he's like I'm, I'm just going to go train a bit he is just... his coach wakes up with him he's in the thing doing doing rope jumping rope pads and it's 12 o'clock at night fucking... then he gets in the um, he gets in the pool and he's like I'm the fucking best in the world I'm the... he's just got that yeah, mentality that is... of just like be. yeah he will be that's 
That just shows you, don't not like being that. the belief, that's the desire. Insane, like yeah. that's where you. And he's training with some guys, man. Jimmy Manuel. Jimmy, um, yeah, yeah. What's the Alex Gustafsson? Yeah. Oh, what Sweden? Yeah. Is he it, Sweden? Where well, that from? I think he was. He was born in um Chechen. He's born yeah, in Russia. Yeah. And I think he moved over to Sweden when he was like 10. Yeah. Um, Gustafsson smoked Manua, didn't he? And then Manua did the right thing, went over and trained with him. Yeah. Went over and trained with him straight away. Bro, yeah, but this is what yeah. all the greats, man. Someone like, go through, humble yeah. yourself and go with someone better. Yeah. You can you can get past these people. I'm trying to think of an example. I know there's someone that's done that and he's progressed past. All the team alpha male boys do it. They all spy with each other and then they go on and win titles and that. Like TJ went on to do it. Cody went on to do it. Well, actually, it might be the only two, but it's, you've got to train like that gym. You're only going to get better, like you yeah, said. Surrounding yeah. yourself with someone better, yeah. you will get better. That's, it's it's yeah, impossible, yeah. Because it's just like, and I mean, if there's certain days where I'm like, I'm tired, man. He's like, let's go spa. I'm, like, I'm tired. I come above and he's like, pussy. Let's go spa. And he's like, and he pushes you. Yeah, he's pushing yeah, you to the next get level. To the gym, go do this. He's he's now he's just recently started introducing me to his friends to go spa with. Like I went and sparred with his uh, mate Brandon the other day. I was supposed to do some rounds with Brandon's older brother. Couldn't do it in the end, but he's finding me sparring partners. He's doing this. He's, yeah, basically, like, almost bordering, like, coach sort of role as well, you know? I'd, I would I want him to be in the corner for the next one if he's available, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, just, I need to get more And it's good for him. you to get, like, meet different people and spark And maybe people. even yeah, with... Yeah. Right, you look yeah. back at the corner and you think, oof, like, that is a savage corner, man. If shit kicks off with both these corners, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're all right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Looking back at my corner and thinking, oof, that's, that's not bad, you know? But um, even for things like mindset and stuff yeah. like that, because he might, because he's fighting for titles and he's on yeah. that bigger stage already, he he will be able to give you little tips and pointers yeah, when you get yeah, to that yeah. stage in your yeah. career. I just, you know, I've never seen how he deals with it on the day, like, because obviously he's, he keeps himself to himself. But going for my first pro fight, it'll be very good to just speak to him and him go, you need to, you, you've been training like an amateur for so many years, now you have to train like a professional. Like there's little bits I've got to step up. I'm trying to do more one-to-ones here and there. Just anything I can do to give me a bit more of an advantage. Because I want to go into this next fight. Ideally hoping this guy tries to shoot on me, stuff it or even sub it. You know, it'd be great to have a sub for my first one. Sort of send a message to people. I'm not just a striker. Yeah, yeah. you can do I've got a fair it, yeah. few submission wins, but they're from where I've hurt the guy. It's not like I've worked him on the ground and subbed him. It's I've caught him with something. He's been hurt or I've tied him out and it's just there. The submission's just there, you know? Yeah. Like I had one head kick where I wobbled the guy jumped on his back I should have just carried on punching him but I just jumped on his back subbed him it's just fights over there and then just jump on his back easy done that's that is, wicked, yeah. man yeah that this is been, I think it's uh, this, this has been just, big man this has been a good pod yeah. thank you for coming no worries. Yeah, thank, you man, me, mate. Yeah. thank you for having me mate yeah but um, like I said we'll um, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get you in a second <laughs> we'll, um, we'll, we'll do something with you and Linus yeah, I was speaking to him yeah. earlier he was saying because he was going to start his own podcast he was yeah, saying to me, what, "Question time follow podcast." Him on Instagram, I tell me, I'll follow it. Question time podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, he was saying, "So I'm, I'll, I want to get him down, I'll yeah, get you yeah. down. It'll be funny." And later in the year, I'm hoping to obviously I, I need to get a new camera, but I'm hoping to have where we can watch a card or something like that, yeah, a boxing yeah. card, oh, and it'll yeah, be like live streamed, yeah, and we'll yeah, be sweet, sitting yeah. in, we'll be yeah. talking, and be watching the card. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're down, we'll do for one that. on the day where there's like cage warriors through the day as well. Yeah. 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 Um, tickets and stuff for your fight. Yeah. So I'll probably have them four to six weeks out from the fight, yeah. and then I'll be selling them. I think it's Houghton Regis the fight will be so a local one. Oh, it's local. We'll be, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be well worth it, man. It's gonna be. Hopefully, there'll be people like myself, Chrissy Mountford. You'll have Tommy Gibbs hopefully fighting on it as well. So we we train together still as well, which is the mad thing. Yeah. Still, yeah. So you'll have some good fighters on it. I'll be making my pro debut and hopefully knocking off someone, someone early doors. So you will be, mate. Yeah, you will week. be. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. This is uh, starting off a nice journey, yeah. Yeah, this has been brilliant, man. Obviously, hopefully yeah. you go on to achieve everything you want to. This is obviously get, n- not going to be the last time we speak to you anyway. No, We've got um, Linus's fight soon as well. Yeah, Linus's yeah. fight, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's another episode of The Curious VGN. Hope you enjoyed. Peace. Peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs>